Those gold dragons fly. <laughs> Wait, is Twist's homunculi considered tiny, or is it also small? Uh, we're both tiny. Oh, neat. Oh, yeah. I thought mechanically pixies are considered small. Uh, oh, that was... Oh, Rin, you want to hear something funny before we go? November 28th is when Dragonflight will uh, launch. Everyone's like, everyone's like, you haven't finished half the talent trees. There's so many problems right now. And you're giving it like two months. And they're like, yeah. It's like, you, they wouldn't rush the game. Or uh, someone was like, you can't like. The get, coming up. I gotta oh, see the thing I liked. Oh, yeah. And people thought 2022 release was impossible. And someone's like, yes, rushing it out before it's ready is indeed possible. Glad <laughs> I noticed we were live. I was going to let out a little burp. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you. Nope, I want to. That's embarrassing. Blah, 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 blah. That's my whole shtick. Oh, Once again, update. on the microphones. So, and of course, uh, desynced my microphone. So, not that anything was said, but um, <laughs> I'm glad I noticed the volume wasn't moving. Was it OBS that updated, or was it uh, the microphones it... updated? And so, when the microphones uh, updated, desyncs. Oh yeah, that happened earlier today. Yeah, there was one done earlier today. So, whenever it updates, because it updated yesterday as well before we did uh, things from the flood so i had to fix it then too but i'm glad i noticed that it did another update before we got started <clears throat> that being said it's time to get started hello uh, oh, that's the overlay hold on uh, <laughs> there it is okay ah here it is haha it feels like we've been here before um but no uh, it's a totally, mostly different cast. Uh, two new players filling in for the third time. And we are playing Waterdeep Dragon Heist, a game that is just that good. We're going to come at it for a third time. Uh, it still feels like my music volume is really loud, and I need to fix that. It's 
loud for me. I just oh, yeah, I usually Freddy. have. Yeah, I was like, I usually have Freddy low, so it's like nice ambience in the background. It's supposed to be nice ambience. It's not supposed to be loud. Um, but sometimes the, the music just gets so epic, and it's like, ooh, I'm I'm in a I'm in a store buying pythons. I don't need this. You need it. You need epic pythons. <laughs> I don't need this on the battlefield with wargs music. Yeah, but um, hello once again. Um, as mentioned, it's a game so good, we're back for a third time playing it. Um, those of you who are familiar with uh, our games of uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, uh, you'll know that uh, the first playthrough that we did are lost to the annals of the before four time, um, when Rin didn't realize that you had to upload to YouTube or Twitch would delete stuff after 90 days. Um, so... Our original Dragon Heist is gone, and Shay ran a wonderful episode, uh, campaign of Dragon Heist uh, where she proceeded to TPK the party just before we got the treasure. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I didn't want to. Proud of you, Shay. So many, I'm not. many of our, <laughs> many of our, many of our long-running characters had been murdered um, just outside of the treasure, and so we had to finish off with uh, a mostly new cast and. You know, it's it's not that it takes away from the greatness of the story or the greatness of the story she made, but it just feels like when you lose your characters at the finish line, you gotta gotta get it again. And again, Waterdeep Dragon Heist is a really, really good game. I could play this game over and over and over and over oh, yeah. and over and over and over. Um, one of the great things they did uh, for anybody who's new here is that they wrote four different stories um, that uh, are all loosely tied together, um, except that they did a weird thing where you couldn't actually tie them together. Um, the other three villains uh, that you do not choose just kind of wander off into the sunset, never to be heard again, even though they're supposed to be active players uh, throughout the campaign that being oh. said yeah it's 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 like the one weird choice that makes everybody scratch their head um about this um the villains there there's a villain for each of the seasons of the year and depending on which one the dungeon master picks is the one that gets focused on and the others just kind of fuck off it's weird um i have decided that we're not doing that um, instead, we are playing a level 3 to level 20 campaign that's going to encompass you all dealing with all four of the masterminds um, that will be uh, appearing. Um, that means uh, Frost and Shay, who have had the luxury of running this once before, is not going to get the same experience they got when I ran it the first time. Um, there will be things that are slightly similar, and there will be things that feel weirdly disjointed, multiverse-y kind of thing. Hence the joke, have we been here before? Um, and some established um, continuity uh, of certain people's backgrounds that uh, came into play the last time that are just going to be canon now because they're not here with us uh, to play again. So it's fine. Definitely, definitely not like uh, we wish anybody else was here playing with us because... That would just be fun. Cough, cough. They will remain nameless. Yes, yes. It would be so fun if they were here. Yeah. If they would just. Show if only they would again. come here and play. We love you. We miss you. They don't. They don't watch the streams. <laughs> I know. You, you make me cry. That's I the worst part. Know. It's like, hey, you know, you helped helped get us going, and then you don't even watch the streams. It's fun. Um, they're yeah. like, look, we, we set you off. You you can the go now. Player, we took the we, we, we took the. Little... Mm -hmm. nah, hey, as a rebound player, we're glad you came back. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll take appreciation where I can get it. Hell yeah, head pats all around. <laughs> um, that being said, hello. Um, why don't we go ahead and go around the table, as it were, and introduce yourselves? Who are you? Who are you going to be playing? And then I will started with my huge exposition dump that will be the actual intro hello i am the Frostwind. uh been here for a while anyone that saw the first and second uh water deep i was there 
<laughs> and uh, I'm going to be... I've remade my old warlock into a new one. A half-elf paladin warlock named Kalindria Willisville. Hello, everyone. I am the second returning player, both in the first one and the dungeon mistress in the second one, the aforementioned tpk -er. I still feel bad about that. Um, Look, it was great. My character went out like a boss. I killed like 10 people dying. <laughs> it was it was really good. I and and I know I know just because I'm me, I, I have you resurrected at the end because there's money to do that. But um, but I it's never my goal to TPK anyone. I'm, I'm there for the story. Um, any hoodle. Uh, I am going to be playing uh, The Rose of Baldur's Gate, uh, a, an ex-mercenary um, half-drow uh, who has a, a few different goals. Uh, one, to look for her father, two, to make her, her, her riches, um, three, to enjoy life, and all sorts of shenanigans. Yes, I'm up next. I don't know what order we're going in. Um, hi, I'm Mimi. There is um, no order. There is no order. I'm, You're the order. I'm the order. I demand justice. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm Mimi. Um, I currently do pretty much nothing on the internet except rant crazily on Twitter. Um, and I'm playing Begonia. Uh, she's she's a ex Sherpa. From uh, I can never I can't say the the word Anorak. right, but on a, from the Anorak Desert uh, to to the east of where we're playing here in Waterdeep, and uh, yeah, she found herself a uh, a genie and went from being a uh, sorcerer to a sorcerer warlock. A sorlock, if you will. A sorlock, if you will. <laughs> Wait, yeah. are you not a monk anymore? No, I I said that. I changed I, it up. No, By I, our eldritch I, powers I, combined. <laughs> I literally I literally saw that she is no longer a halfling and I never saw any class changes. Okay. Neat. <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah. we're gonna have to talk about your patron stuff uh, later on, but that's fine. It, it doesn't have to come up yet. But it's uh, uh well if you want I can be quick. So I have No 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 no. We 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 don't have to worry about that. Yeah, no, we can work out we can work out patron stuff because great thing about me as a dm is i like having patrons actually take part in what's going on so i i want to i want personality and details and they're gonna pop up and be like hey i need you to go find me like a blue it's apple. a genie warlock so they're in my pocket yeah yeah they're gonna want a blue apple and you're gonna just have to make it work otherwise your third level spells won't work so just stay tuned <laughs> oh it's happening. damn yeah it's gonna good be thing fun. i'm keeping only one level of warlock because I just it's wanted just Aldridge this. Blast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's just fine. this. Uh, this. Um, uh, just some guy comes in one day. And he's like, "Honey, I need, I need a blue apple. apple." I need a blue apple, and that's gonna unlock your second level spells. Do it. Um, anyways, uh, continue, please. Uh yeah, no, that was about it. I was going to discuss my uh, genie vassal. Actually, it's a beautiful uh, pendant. That is a crystal that merges uh, a deep uh, crimson red with an icy blue, and they kind of swirl in the middle. And that's where uh, my genie resides and where I will go if I ever need to run away from battle. Nice. Um, also, hello, everybody in chat. Uh, quite the turnout for not putting out any social uh, socials for this, but uh, I brought well, my hey. friends. <laughs> no, that's fine. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, last but certainly never least, uh, Dukler, please uh, tell us who you are. Hello, everybody. I'm Dukler 3 I am playing the the Pixie Artificial Druid Twist, who's really just wants to make some jewelry. That's kind of a thing. I wonder if she tried to steal my damn pendant because you can't have it. Go ahead and steal. Borrow. Oh, yeah. You're you to you don't danger. steal things, you borrow that. Borrow. It might look kind of shiny when you're not looking, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. It's not stealing out, is it? All right. Um. Well, yeah, cool. Um. You guys are 
uh, third level adventures, which means you've traveled around for a while, knowing each other, um, and all of that great stuff. Before we get started, I just need everybody to uh, do me the kindness of hitting their mutes, because I have a long exposition intro, and uh, anybody who's witnessed these games before know that people like to chime in before the DM is done reading, so just go ahead and hit yeah, that. Yeah, I'm a mute. jerk, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead and hit. Uh, yeah, Shay's Shay's really bad about it too. So just go ahead and hit your mute for a second, because this is uh, this is long, but I read it and it was really cool, and I want to be able to convey it for you all as well. All right, are we ready? I think so. Okay. Uh, and if you want to read along, there it is for you. But for the audience, there's a cool little visual. <clears throat> On the western shores of Faerun lies the city of Waterdeep, a place of business for many, opportunity for others, and called home by countless thousands, but all know it as the City of Splendors. Its history is old, older than the noble families that rule in the upper wards, older than Baldur's Gate or Icewind Dale, older even than Neverwinter Forest and the great plains that succumbed to the spell plague and calamity. It has persevered. Its history is contingious. The city behind its high white walls has never fallen. This is the hub of many races who make up the spanning caste. This is a city of spectrums, great wealth and oppressive poverty, festivals and fairs, crimes and corruption, adventure and intrigue, and pampering and imbibing. A dictonomous city, oh god these words, a dictonomous city, nobles of the north, ward who parade through the streets and throw elegant balls to flaunt their wealth just beyond the walls that divide them from the field ward homes that hold a thousand hungry mouths some of them old beggars, others children made orphans by a parent's vice or war or both. Each of its seven wards houses humans, tieflings, dwarves, half-orcs, elves, dragonborn, and half another world of creatures. Merchants can be heard calling out the contents of their stalls in the trade ward. Smells of fresh-caught fish, ripe fruit, and spices brought in by the traders who travel over the Sea of Swords. The streets of Castle Ward are pristine, patrolled by guards who don colorful and exquisite armor. Statues that act as street signs, pointing towards the courthouse, a local theater, or the king's extravagant castle. Just beyond the crimeless Castle Ward is the Sea Ward home of a dozen religions with gaudy temples, some built of stone, others carved straight into massive statues, the size of titans that loom over the city of Waterdeep. Their features sometimes disappear into the sky when the clouds hang low or when a fresh morning fog rolls in from the sea. They have been still for a, they have been still for so long that houses have begun to appear near, around, and on them. At one time, their names were known, and their history told often. But the city is old, and with time, the people have lost the stories. In the dock ward, amidst the sea foam and the smell of salt water, raucous laughter or murderous shouting, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference can be heard from behind brightly lit tavern windows. Salty dogs partake in bouts of violence, for brawls go hand in hand with hard liquor, and the liquor flows like water there. The dark alleys that pepper this ward are the hunting grounds for cutthroats, the busy harbor a playing field for a thief with sticky fingers. The nobles avoid this area, as much for the general smell as the inherent danger, like a lamb wandering into a pack of wolves. The great graveyard, called the City of the Dead, sits in the eastern portion. It houses countless dead, 
with seven and seven and seven generations past. Walls have been erected around it, guards patrol it, and in case any upstart necromancer is looking for flesh for his dark magics. No dead wander about. It is but a large graveyard. But that doesn't stop the children from telling ghost stories or daring one another to sneak in and stay the night. Childish things, the adults will say. But even a grown man is superstitious enough that he wouldn't partake in any dare of that sort. On the southern side of the city looms Mount Waterdeep, a natural landmark that sweetens an already beautiful city. As spring begins, the only sign left of winter is the mountain's peak, which still glows brilliant white in the morning sun. It once housed the original denizens that started the city of Waterdeep. Tunnels and mines run through its core, and it's been long since abandoned, or so the city thought. There's been rumbling in the dark, sounds from the old mines, a patrol disappearing here or there. Some say it's a troll, or perhaps under dark creatures striking in the night. Others rumored that a mage took residence there. He experimented on things better left untouched. He went mad. Some say on those cold, still nights you can hear his laughter echoing off the mountainside. But that is a story for another time. This story has more humble beginnings. We start our adventure in the warmth of the Yawning Portal Inn. Four unlikely friends find themselves, as they say, in the right place at the wrong time. All right, you guys can unmute now, now that I got to finish that. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I know that was a really long, long exposition there. Um, I almost forgot. Wrong, but it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. But uh, hey, listen, it's uh, what me, we needed. You need to say exposition. Exposition. There yeah. we go. Uh, so we're so we're in the yawning portal after the hole opens in the middle of it. Got it. Uh, the hole ha always exists in the middle of it. Uh, hmm. I think um, I played in a campaign where like that actually was part of the story. I don't know if it was uh, so home the, or not. So the great thing about yawning portal, and I don't mind uh, pausing this tangent while I set up the next uh, music track. Um, the owner of the yawning portal. Excuse me specifically built atop this location because this portal um, has existed for decades and the Yanni portal has existed for decades and he built it specifically after him and his adventuring colleagues um, traveled down it and struck a vast amount of wealth and so he Ooh. came back and built it around it so one that he could keep an eye on things there um, and, you know, make money off of letting people go to and from this one particular entrance. There are several entrances um, into the Underdark um, throughout the city, but this is the one that he personally keeps an eye on. Uh, let's see. Stop. Just want you to stop it. Play this one. That's the yawning portal music. Um, so we find our heroes um, not gathered around a table at an inn, but instead slowly rising from the darkness that is the yawning portal. Um, you all had traveled several nights ago um, alongside a great hero by the name of Melun Four Dragon, um, a retired adventurer who makes the occasional coin by escorting less less skilled heroes down into the Underdark. Your adventure has lasted uh, fairly well. Um, an unfortunate incident had resulted in Rose being captured uh, by a patrol of drow, 
but you all were able to recover her before she had been sacrificed uh, to their dark goddess. Um, she did not leave wholly intact, but an eye for an eye leaves the Underdark blind. Um, as the crane slowly winches the last of you up, um, Maylun and Rose went up first as the crane can only hold uh, normally two denizens at a time. Uh, the second lift has the fortunateness of having Twist being able to uh, ride alongside uh, being a much smaller creature than the others. Uh, but it's not long before the f group of you are brought back to the surface, to the warmth of sunlight and the smell of fresh food being cooked on the fire and the promise of free-flowing alcohol. Free-flowing? Free-flowing. Um, as long <laughs> as you... the kegs open? As long as you have the coin, uh, the wine is always on tap. Um, let's see here. Where is Maylun? There we go. Alright. Um, Maylun, of course, is an old, seasoned uh, adventurer um, he's, to say that he's down on his luck is not true, but he does, uh, charge very little to take adventurers down, um, but he is a skilled warrior, and as you all know, he fought valiantly to help recover your friend, uh, when it became clear she was lost. And so, um, as you all step off of the crane, uh, and there is actually a, uh, rather excited cheer from those around the tables to see that you all returned alive. Um, you see there's a quick exchanging of coins, um, and there's some crossing of uh, information off of a nearby chalkboard, as uh, it is commonplace to uh, hold what is considered a Deadpool um, to see if you would come back or not. And so uh, people were uh, collecting collecting coins for lost bets and won earnings and they seem quite pleased more or less a few people grumble and hand over coins but uh, Meilun pats Rose on the shoulders and he says well kid I'm happy to say that uh, all things considered we made it out alive and that's something uh, I uh I put it, uh, I, like, clap his other shoulder and then just bring him into hug and say, Your work's always great. Appreciate you. I think I owe you more than a drink this time. More than a drink? What else is there? What else do you want? <laughs> well. The DM says needing a sip of his drink. <laughs> um. Well. I could think of a few things, but a hearty meal is a good start. Bonnie! A round of drinks and a live boar to be roasted for me and my friends. Um, as he shouts... Well, you're gonna cook it alive? That's the best way to cook it. No, it hurts. You don't want it... No, it locks in all the flavor. The struggle. The fear. You can taste it on the meat. Ugh. You Westerners are so weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you sure. kind of like lifts yourself up and kind of heads over to an empty table. Yeah, you're, you're free to move yourselves, by the way. Oh, yeah. I forgot I could do that. Yeah. I haven't played in World 20 in so you're, long. Though. You're good. I just left you guys in the middle of the thingy and I didn't want you to think you were stuck. Um, but he shouts, he shouts for uh, one of the local serving uh, girls. Um, a young woman by the name of Bonnie. And she's busy carrying an empty tray. And she says, Man, loon, you old goat. Don't you be disturbing me while I'm trying to work. And he says, No, Bonnie, we made it back. Food for us, please. And he remembers his manners. And there's a oozing of honey as he adds it in there. And kind of jingles a coin purse. And that makes her race of eyebrows. And she says, Oh, you paying this time? Well, that's a horse of a different color. And she'll move off to go place the order for them. Hey, Malone, didn't 
What does Rose say? And she would cover it. Why are you showing them? I'm so confused. I tend to run a large tab here at the bar. So if she thinks I'm not paying, she tends to be slower. If it's your coin, all the same. Mm. Uh, okay. Rose That's does actually take out. psychological manipulation. I get it. Well, when you have a reputation as uh, tarnished as mine, he kind of laughs. Um, he takes the time to kind of loosen his armor, and he unfashions this blue silver battle axe that he uh, keeps strapped to his back. Um, it is a very um, special weapon to him, what helped make him make a name for himself. He says it's also magic, but uh, that could be neither here nor there, as no one can really prove it. Um, if, uh, if you were to believe the rumors, sometimes you could hear him talking to his axe. I wonder if there is a spell that can detect magic. There could be. There, there could be a spell. There could be a spell, but it's neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. Rose does take out her coin first because she doesn't tend to to uh, uh, to treat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Megaloon, I think we all owe you our thanks, and I kind of flip in a gold piece myself. Well. <laughs> Considering my fee was already paid for, uh, this is all just gravy. Oh, bonus set. Yeah, it's a, it's a tip. Yeah, I'm I'm almost scared to ask how high the your tab was. Ah, uh, you uh, you don't want to know. I uh, I practically live here, so it's more of That's... rent than a tab. Well, then here, and she'll toss in a few coin to, like, a few gold ah, like, so to help with everything. Why? Are you saying you're interested in finding out? Why not? Yeah, I thought that she was what I... See, courtship, y'all are bad at this. Um, are we, though? <laughs> half a mind to, look, half a know, mind to know, just throw just, her over the table if you're saying you, I should be direct. Well... Yeah, I guess that was what uh, I was now, saying. Now saying you're a blushing funny. maiden when I mentioned just doing it right here. I think it's funny, is all I'm saying. Can we get kicked out if we do? For the uh, second time, yes. You will get kicked <laughs> out if you do that. Uh, Maylun looks over to, to the bar and he says, Dernan, have you changed your policy on public fornication? Dernan just kind of looks at him and he points to the great sword and he says, All right, all right. I hear you, friend. No putting my sword out while yours is out. Durden just kind of nods and goes back to cleaning a mug. It's more extreme than just getting booted out. No, I like I said, I live here, so I don't want to get booted out. No, the sword seems like it'd be more for sticking in you and not booting you out. Oh. Yeah, I suppose. I have my drink now. I don't know. Bonnie, can they have their drink now? Bonnie just kind of looks at him and she says, Yes, you old goat, I'm working on it. Bonnie walks by and she says, Sorry for the delay, dears. Here's your drinks. Oh, as the drinks are being put down, I say, Rose, can I I see your face? I didn't really get a good look. I'm so sorry. Yeah, why don't you tell us uh, how, how Rose looks now? Um... She'll, she'll like unwrap the whatever bandage she has over it. Didn't have time to get a proper eye patch, um, but there is a burn mark that just kind of uh, stretches out uh, in all directions, and the skin's kind of uh, is is just healed over. Not well, the looks, thing, huh? Nah, it's not pretty, but it looks like it'll heal well. No infection, at least. Have to. How's your balance? How's your vision? Um, the half out fears kind of like twitch and perk up. I still got my senses about me. I don't know how hard it will be to actually, you know, shoot a bow, but. Wonder has been doing this with her finger on her on the one bad side to see if she's noticed <laughs> so far. Just wiggle the finger up and down. 
Let's find out. Would you like to make a uh, coordination test for us? Yes. <laughs> Who's going to throw something at Rose? Somebody across the bar throws a potato. I'll flip, uh, a potato. I'll, I'll flip one of the coin I was going to give to all right. give to our boy at her. Uh, all right. Uh, go ahead and make me a, um, a, a acrobatics roll there. Rose. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> um, Things are in the side of the head. Yeah, it's a fresh injury, so she's like, I'm ready, throw it. And she puts her hands up, and Calindria, you you have this coin, and you basically just, like, shotgun it at her, and it just bounces straight off her forehead, and then her <laughs> hand reflexes after way too late. The thing where like she leans over the table to catch it, be like, okay, so you still need a little, little time, but a little practice, I got it. I mean, you swung a lot faster than the when we were getting out of there, and you almost got hit by that club. I did choke that priestess out. With my yeah, that was kind of hot. Oh, sorry, I thought we were. Never mind. No, I mean, you're more not blue. wrong. I pick up the coin I missed and I just hand it to Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, Bonnie. Well, I've I've been here for like a good minute or so with your drinks, but uh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, you all enjoy the drinks and the music, and uh, uh, we're goring the pig for Maylun as we speak. Thank you, Bonnie. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure, Bonnie. I, I I do give her the coin as a tip. She takes it, tucks it away into her blouse, and smiles before heading off to go tend to someone else. Um. Despite the way this map looks, it is a busy uh, evening here at the Yawning Portal. Um, there are others that are sitting at the other tables, talking, gossiping. Um, these are just the important NPCs, so I don't have to clutter it with a lot of uh, useless noise. Um, but um, we'll just say for the sake of this, it's going to take them a little bit of time to get this boar uh, cooking yeah, you ever um, cook a whole board? It takes an entire afternoon. It takes an entire afternoon. It's going to take some time. Um, but, you know, we have the, the luxury of magic on our side. So um, mm -hmm. this poor boar is, is it's like a it's like a foie gras where instead of stuffing its its liver to the point of being fat, they just like have a, a, a fire ganasi, like stuff little like fire elementals into it. So it cooks from the inside out. That's oh no, that sounds <laughs> terrible. Why would but you say that? But it's so delicious once it's done. Um, yeah, and so, you know, they basically employ these fire elementals that, that help cook the pig uh, and accelerate this cooking process and internalize the temperature to the point that it, uh, you can taste, you can taste the suffering in every bite. Um, I, I do not tell, I do not tell Twist that this is probably just yeah. to yank their leg. Mm -hmm. I fall for it like straight on my face. I'm like, oh my god, it's so much more tender than any pork I've ever had before. <laughs> Flash maybe the suffering was real. Maybe the maybe the suffering was worth it. Oh no. Flash forward to the the mage council. Polymorph the next prisoner into, into <laughs> oh, swine. <no. laughs> <laughs> Listen. Once they've served their sentence at the pig farm down by Dunnins, everything will be fine. Oh my god, could you imagine? I could see that happening in Thay. Or your your punishment is to live out a year as a pig, and if you make it to the end, then, you know, whatever You're crime, quitted. Whatever crime yeah. is, is wiped from your record, but, uh, you know, if there's a really bad harvest or they get hungry... Uh, yeah, get to it's... celebrate with the people that didn't make it. Yep. I am gonna say, Twist can drink a normal person's size of alcohol. Cannot eat a normal person's size of food. That's fine. You can put in the put in the good effort. Um, but the the food and drink do arrive, and there is enough time to gather and celebrate really take in the, the fine boar. Um, it's served with potatoes and fresh greens and uh, the apple that's in its mouth um, is a weird blue color, but uh, 
It's probably eaten very quickly by Meiloon before anybody notices. <laughs> um, Meiloon takes one of the pig legs and is just chomping on it, and he says, So, what, uh, what's next on the agenda for the four of you? You all aren't planning to go back into the into the Undermountain anytime soon, I hope. Rose is, is eating equally as hearty as a mercenary. She had to learn how to eat when she could. Um, yeah. Claudia is doing a very similar thing. Like, they had almost similar upbringings, but she still got the... It's not as fast. She's trying to enjoy what she can. Uh, let's see. Um... Well, we're not going back anytime soon, at least until that is uh recovered might pick up a few odd jobs um i might do um i'm actually interested in looking around for someone oh yeah yeah i heard i have a father well, that's that's good news. Uh, most people tend to have fathers. Or at I'd least hope a, so. Or at least a, a father adjacent donor. Yeah, at unless least that means like, I'm not like a, a clone or something, right? You're definitely, or one of the you're definitely a clone. Yeah, you're not a spore. <laughs> uh, you, didn't, you didn't sprout spontaneously from fungus. Oh, or did she? You know, we never, like, we don't know where she came from. Where did you it, come from? You never really. I need to do a biopsy on Rose. Like, we need to get like, to the I, bottom of this. I know your name is Rose of Boulder's Gate, but can we really prove that you're from Boulder's Gate? How'd you get the uh, title? Uh, that was back when I was a mercenary. Um, I was I was one of the commanders in a, a small company. Is it, is it really a title and not more of an identifier of where she came from? There used to be used to be a monster hunter that walked around all the time. His name was like Jimmy of Riverbend or something. That was what he always called himself. It's not that strange. Oh, good it? old Jimmy. Miss that guy. Oh, where I'm from, everybody with a, with just a G. the first name and that's it. Well, but we were we were all just a group of halflings and people, human. Well, uh, my mother was a, a druid. And so, you know, druids are kind of long-lived. And um, she settled up near Boulder's Gate when she had me. And I kind of picked up mercenary life um, to get by a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're so fascinating, Mei Woon. I can see why you like her. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons. Everybody like likes a lot of people, you know, say a lot of people like Rose, and for a lot of reasons, it's true. Is it because she can stab things good? She does stab things really well. Well, to answer your question from my point of view, I have no idea what's next on the agenda. I still have no idea how this city life stuff works, so I kind of just follow whoever is leading around like a lost puppy. Ooh, can we get a puppy? You have enough. And, and then I look at uh, I look at uh, Twist's little uh, little homunculi. What's your homunculi look like? I forget. So it's a mix of twisted like copper wires twisted together with bits of wood and leaves mm. that form up like a pony bird's body with wings behind it as well. But oh, you have a twin. Kind of pimp. Cool. Like a stick person with leaves. But a hummingbird. An old mm -hmm. stickman. Oh, just but yeah, that's, that's staring good. intently at it with my one good eye. I'm just gonna eat some more. I don't food. think I've ever asked. Is that thing sentient? Um. Twist stares at as well. <laughs> Which just stares off into space, not thinking the ramifications of that question. <laughs> Is it sentient? That's a great question. It doesn't like to be touched if I don't touch it, or that other people touch him. Um, have you given it hmm. a name? You know, I haven't. <laughs> I I didn't. I didn't ask any follow up questions about Pip. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Pip's personality? 
Like from an out of character standpoint. It you... kind of is like a mirror of Twist where Twist is kind of not very focusable where Pip is just will stay on the job and sometimes bring Twist back to the job at hand. I just I just kind of like I look at the homunculus image and I just expect its oh, eyes to be I expect its eyes to be like three times bigger, much glassier. And then like the Lilo and Stitch thing where Stitch's tongue comes out and like picks its <laughs> nose with its tongue. That's how I kind of envision this homunculus. Just with what like big glassy eyes and just like. Nah. But that's going to get our pip as well. Yeah, we're going to have to get some pip art. Um, yeah, anyways. But... Uh, After that, I just say, like, not that Pip isn't cool, but a puppy would be really cool. But Pip can hit things when it's like 15 feet away. And I can make it do th magic through it. That's an oddly specific task. What else would a Pip do? I don't, I don't know. I've never grown a thing that's supposed to look like a smaller me. I mean, I, I guess if you count my illegitimate children, but that's not not really what I meant. Wait, you grew the children? It's a metaphor. I mean... I didn't. You know, there's a folklore where I'm from where they used to plant the kids like turnip and pull them out by their hair, and that's how kids were born. That's, that's not how babies are born at all. It's by that's... throwing them over the bar table. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how babies are born at all. <laughs> It's just a thing they said in my... Never mind. You guys lived weird, uh, sheltered guy... lives. Uh... Well, I didn't. No, no, I can't imagine you did. Or can you? Or can Andrea, I? you've been quiet. What's up? What's on your brain? Yeah, Calendria. Let's pick the fat. You mean, you mean no chew the fat? fat? Yeah, that too. I, I mean, look, tell, it just, I can chew it all day. Do, I don't, I don't get an ounce on me, but you know, that's a lot of work went into that. Bad. I know that once we can get a break, I'm going to. There's a lot of festivals throughout the year. I hope to participate in them. You know, it's it's fun to do stuff for entertainment, make money. And I don't have to play an instrument. I can just. Oh, God. And uh, I did do a little stop over in Baldur's Gate briefly. And I remember I made a lot of money be as some quote of the world's strongest half elf. She's doing just like massive finger. Quote. I know three people bigger than me, but it was funny lifting like two dwarves on each arm just as a flex. Did you spin them around, too? No, that would constitute his dwarf tossing in Baldur's Gate, and I've already been yelled at once about that. Oh yeah, me around. Want to break those weird city laws. Some dwarves like to be tossed. They won't ever tell you that. Um, but yeah, not not gonna lie. Uh, Cal, hope you don't mind I call you that. Um, but at least twice a day, I see your biceps and want to just squeeze them. I mean, you're more than welcome to look. I let everybody do it for free the first time. It's fine. <laughs> it's and most and most of the time, and most of the time, she gets to do it anytime. Uh, and she'd like point over to you know, like some people. Like most of them get free, but some of the the the, the weirder ones I charge because you know what? They're dumb enough to pay, so why not? The weirder ones. Just uh... oh, wait. I come over and give a very sensual two-arm squeeze of your left bicep while you're holding yeah. a hawk of ham. And she just, like, in the middle of eating, just flexes on instinct. <laughs> anyway. You know, you should keep a sign out that just says, uh, bicep flexes, one silver. Free bicep flexes. Thinking about adding that to, uh, the list of things. Because, you know, there's lots of stuff you can do in festivals. You can pick things up that people think are really heavy and they're not, do break and bend things, uh, any kind of competitions where, you know, you can fight, I'm, I'm there. Used to, 
used to have to do that. So, like you know, might as well make money battery. now. My favorite's still the one where you, uh, where you pressed the guy you had tied up. I mean, what was my favorite thing? Let's <laughs> Oh, I love to wrestle druids who have shaped who have wild shifted into animals. That's fun. I'm three in one with a bear, so you know. Twist, turn into a bear. We can't do that yet. Wait, I what thought I thought she was a jeweler. You thought she is, is, but you, you know think she's we would got... just take a jeweler down into the Thunder Mountain. That's insane. The jewelry is just, you know, a fun accessory to it. Well, I got my jewels, too, and I show off my cool pendant. The uh, the blue and red have switched sizes or sides from last uh, last time I've shown it off. I'm super proud of it. Ooh. Found it. It's so ready again. Does it change color, or am I just seeing backwards now that I have one eye? No, it doesn't change colors. They just shift around. It's super cool. Oh, neat. And Color Jill, like, kind of give a little, like, light tap with her finger to him. And it, like, the... it, you know, I, you know those, like, rubber balls that have glitter inside with the liquid? It kind of gives that kind of, uh, look to it. I'm like, hey, don't tap it too hard. My friend's in there. Oh, no, I brought oh, friend? <laughs> yeah, my friend. Um... I know you said you you you've got a friend and he helps you out with stuff, but so you know I don't I I don't ever remember you saying that they're encased in jewelry. Well, my friend is a chin, um, and yeah, sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. It's they I don't think they're in there right now. Um, hey Effie. Oh, is that me? Hey, what's up? Uh, my friends want to say hi, I guess. I don't know. Oh, well, uh, I wasn't really ready for this, but uh, hey, what's up? Well, no, no, no pressure. You can do uh, whatever you want. No, nah, it's cool. I don't mind being put on the spot like this. Hey, guys, this is my voice if you weren't uh, weren't too sure on that. You're the worst. Oh, man. Why would you do this to me? Because <laughs> I, I was put on the spot. <laughs> Now, see, do it the most southern drawly thing. I was just like, howdy, y'all. It's howdy. me, Effie, the Gian. I'm the Gian. Hey, how's it going? Um, actually, hold on. Let me see if I can, if I can do so, uh, if I, if, Let me see if I can do you one better, okay? So we can give this some real... So Effie is an F3D gen, by the way. Oh, so I gotta, I gotta get some smolder to it. Got it. I'll hold on. Yeah. Where's howdy, the... y'all. What's the what's the microphone? Well, make make her sound like a rogue from the X Men cartoon. There you and, go. And what's perfect. the microphone setting thing called to to mess with it? Oh, uh, Logitech something. Logitech something something with an L. Okay, hold on. I'll put the G Hub. G Hub. <laughs> Y'all know where the G Hub is. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Oh, my brain is too poisoned from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, helium chipmunk? No, not that. Um, I, I I don't get to demo these voices, so you're gonna have to bear with me before I hit it, okay? It's the first Hang session. On, this me, is the best time to iron it out. It, when the switch. That was kind of like far off robotic bad guy. I, well, not robotic. I like it. Chris leans over to Pip. The alcohol pendant is talking. It's not an alcohol pendant, it's a crystal. Crystals hold power. Did you also know that their molecular structure is perfectly symmetrical? He said there was gin in it. There's there's a ginny in it. <laughs> I can't hear you very well, Rick. <laughs> I guess it's, it naturally makes it quieter, so the echo doesn't yeah. become reverb. Oh, that's true. Maybe if I... There you go. <laughs> I 
Effie, when did you become Satan? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> And that would be like a great air Yeah. Red, I can't understand anything. Oh god, no, it's way too high. <laughs> Perfect. 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 Alright, alright. We're not we're not doing we, we're we not want, doing we want that. we want people to take Effie seriously, but Effie sounds like Alvin and we yeah. can't not think about that for now. We're gonna we're gonna have to workshop this, but for now that's not it. Okay, um, so she what she was saying, um, assuming uh, she them pronouns for this Ifrit was that they are not a jinn. Jinn are from the plane of air, and they are an Ifrit, which is from the plane of fire. There is a distinct difference. I'm sorry if my my culture says uh, Ginny as a re replacement for Genie, which is the overall of. Uh... That's I usually a mortal, a mortal now. realm. They're not gonna let me back in the vassal, and it's so much no, more it's, comfy than an in room. You didn't, you didn't do anything. It's usually a mortal realm mistranslation. They assume all I was more elemental correct. people are. You know. I was more correcting the brownie, anyways. Yes, I'm aware she's a fairy, but uh, she understands what the misnomers uh, kind of sting when it's the shoes on the other foot. Really small you would have thought car. it was a brownie for a while, actually. <laughs> well, at least you're not a blondie. <laughs> I get that. Oh, okay. that's good. It's, oh. be it's because a blondie is made with white chocolate instead of regular chocolate. Ah. And she's blonde. At least on so, the picture. So you just you just sort of keep your husband in, in there? Are we married? Are, now? We aren't married. We're just besties. Oh my! Oh, you're she's like big quotes roommates. Okay, I get it. You're it's best a, friends. It's a symbiotic relationship. Okay. When did, when did we become yeah. pals? Being pals. I don't know. We share a pillow room every night. That's true. Truth be told, between us girls and the bearded one. You there don't need to get of... into the details of what happens in nope. said pillow. Nope, we have to get into details now. There is a bit of heavy petting on my gem. It's just <laughs> a little <laughs> warm, I'm sorry. It's cozy. Adventuring leaves my, my muscles sore. Now I'm, now I'm embarrassed. Oh, don't be, it's fine. Maylun just kind of takes a long drink of his ale and he says, Look, if you want to throw the gem over the table, I won't blame you. No, we have a little bit more class than you, Mabel. Yeah, you throw it on the back of Rose after you've thrown her on the table. Jeez, oh my goodness. Look, if, if they're going to go out and say it, we might as well have fun. We know it's not yeah, going to happen yeah. because, A, I don't want Dernan to kill me. That man can cleave me in half, and I mean literally. I don't want to die. He, uh, he, he shoots you finger crossbows really, in a wink. He does look really menacing. Does not he, gonna lie. Well, how do you oh, think he survived long enough to get so rich he could own this blasted uh, inn? It's hard to make it to retirement age as an adventure. Let me tell you what. Well, all I'm going to say is you guys better say thank you to Effie because if it wasn't for her, I couldn't have shot that ice knife through that, uh, that drow's head right on the way out. It really, really made everything look, like, beautiful when Rose was just squeezing it. Like, it was about to pop, and then you... BAM! And then it exploded, and all the ice shards shot everywhere, and killed all the drow around them. It was... Yeah. It was just quality. Mm -hmm. It was great. What do you need? Right. My, my, my... I've got some weird spell help, but mine's just, like... Here, help other people out, which I guess is fine. That's I'm, I got good at that in the in the pits, but you know. Hell, the only reason why I made it out of there was because I kept so many people alive, that I had so many friends that they just let me go eventually. 
Oh Avengers. no, there's new people on the map. Did we hear these? <laughs> did we hear these people with red circles around them? What the people are you referring to? Can you hear um, red? Can you hear? Yes. Are you hearing colors now? How much has Begonia had to drink? Um, probably a pretty reasonable amount. She she likes to chat and she likes to drink. It's well, her, it's, well, be well it's Begonia, like since you're being so observant, why don't you give me a perception check? Maybe you can kind of overhear what's going on over. Ooh, maybe I can. I don't think I have. Per yep, I don't have perception. I'll That's still okay. Play. You still Ooh, have I rolled eyes. Really high. Yeah, but Begonia specifically, since you're the one who called it out, um, you do see that um, over in the corner there is a a large looking half orc woman. She's probably just as well built as Kalindria is. Um, she's tall. She's muscled. Um, she is currently surrounded by five menacing looking individuals and she doesn't look phased by it she's taking a long drink from the the flagon that was set in front of her and she kind of brings it down and this gentleman here in the front he slams his hands down on the table and he says you fucking pig are you hearing what i said you think you shites can just go around killing our friends and there ain't gonna be repercussions for it and the two that are flanking him both kind of slowly slip brass knuckles onto their their fists because drawing weapons is strictly forbidden uh in the yawning portal but you can't really prove a, a pair of knuckles are there uh in the moment he says uh we're gonna make you pay for what you did and i just want you to know that I'm going to keelhaul you and drag you back for the Xana. And she holds up a finger and she lifts the flagon again and starts to drink. And he waits patiently for her to keep drinking. And she's just... And it's just like... It's very Throw the mug at him. Throw the mug at him. It's very clear. It's very clear that after a moment, there's not anything left. And he's just kind of staring at her. And he says, are you fucking finished? And she says, nah. Bonnie, another round, please. And he says, fuck this. And he flips the table. And uh, she backs up onto her feet. And she throws the flag in at this one. And it strikes her in the head. And uh, if... Uh, the gentleman at the bar, or not at the bar, at the stage was paying attention, which he is, he sees that there's a, a fight about to start and you hear him grab his uh, his loot and he goes, down, 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 and he goes, and the orc in the back yelled, everyone attack. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, other instruments start playing as well and they uh, play the uh, legally distinct uh, barroom blitz um, as uh, she starts fighting these folks off and the question to you all is what do you do um there i didn't want to interrupt but during that that whole exchange uh would i have been able to get a look at any insignias on them uh you can make a perception with your one good eye yep well well uh no because people aren't silly enough to walk around with their insignias out in the open. Well, that's fine. Home are, people are, are. Any good. Yeah, the good people do, but uh, criminals certainly don't. There's no, there's no official insignias on display. Uh, yep, I hear the ball, uh, the barroom brawl blitz song. So I'm like, all right, here we go. Hey. Hey, Luna, what's the, what's the rule on magic? I know I can't use a weapon, but. <laughs> uh, don't piss dirt it off. That's the rule. No, no property damage. I, uh, um, am I under the impression folks are jumping in? Yeah. Oh yeah, like Collinger's immediately on her feet for the shape right. of the So, uh, we're going to call for initiative. That means make sure your token is selected before you roll your initiative. That way it shows up on the tracker. So hey, 13's pretty good for a one, one dex. Yeah. Does Pip not work on your initiative, or did you just have him selected by accident? I had him selected by accident. All right, give me one second. I'll fix it. 
So you become a 19. Does he operate on your turn? Uh, After. Yeah, he moves after I do, but it, we can't share the same turn. Okay. So I'll just delete him. Um, da -da 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 -da. Mayloon's not going to get involved. Um, so I will draw these folks up. The only smart one at the table. <laughs> hey, Rin, how do I get rid of the, uh, like the avatar pictures? I... It was in the settings, but now so I can't they find it. they changed it um, when they updated oh. it not too long ago, and it's always a pain in the butt to find. I think it's, I know where oh, I to find it's it. Under, it's under the audio visual uh, video, and then you hit the video display tab, and you can change it to names only. You have to ah, refresh cool. the page afterwards, though. Oh, mine okay. usually just clears it. I had to refresh. Hmm. I did it. Okay. Woohoo! Cool. That gives me so much more screen real estate. Yeah, I clear mine out too because it's pretty bad. Um, and here's Yagra. Oh, I lied. Hey, look, somebody does wear theirs out fully on display. Um, so there you go. Cool. Um, Yagra's Yagra's wearing a necklace that has a red gem with a winged snake uh, uh, on it. So you can see that very clearly. Um, Man, look at all these extra people in here. Yeah, Baya is technically there too, but she doesn't actually do anything important in this one. Uh, I'll be back in that? chapter three. Uh, so this is this is the guy who's who's playing the music. Uh, just so that's just so that's there, and I already linked Yagra. Uh, I need to find her stat block though. I don't need a handout. I need the actual. There it is. Yagra. I have too many tabs open. Hello. Stefan! So sad I couldn't commit to this, but happy to drive by and hope you all have many improbable escapes. Thank you, Stefan. We miss you. Thank you, Stefan with us again soon um, okay i have yagra's nope 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 i lost it where did it go i hate the wow text. i i didn't uh, pay attention to this cool thing for gladiator what'd you get by popular demand you can always find a place to perform usually in an inner tavern but possibly what? with a circus or theater or noble's court at any of those places, you receive free lodging and uh, food at a modest, comfortable standard as long as you're there. You, you, you receive free lodging for beating these people up. I mean, basically. Uh, <laughs> it's like time to put on a show. Yeah, for, uh, performers get, usually get to eat and sleep for free. That's kind of kind of a great perk. Um, let me just turn off all the usual stupid stuff that's part of the NPC character sheets. Really needs to just be a default button for this. Oop. Oh, that wasn't me. I okay. didn't mean. Yeah, I didn't mean. No, I, I hit something at the same time, so I thought I accidentally rolled something. Uh, never whisper rolls. Okay. So. I have my guys. I need to roll their initiatives. So, first asshole. That's one. Damn. Now the, oh, that'll be the best I roll all night. Probably. Oh. One. Two. Well, there you go. Three. It's always a mixed bag. There we go. That's more like it. All right. Turn order go. What? Hey, so I have options oh, I that were, you know, I think I closed it by bar. accident. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, don't blow up the bar. That's probably not a good idea. Um, yeah, I was is... just making sure because I thought most of my things did like explosions, but anybody... I have a few that don't. Is anybody so... missing on the turn order? Nope, there's four of us. Okay, you're all there. Yep. Um, as I said, Mayloon, uh is not getting involved, um, and so uh, as the as the round starts up, um, the 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 bard goes. And the bard in the back at every one attack and it turned into a ballroom blitz. And the girl in the corner said, boy, I want to warn you. It'll turn into a ballroom blitz.
Prince. And he uh, actually gives Yagra and the four of you, who he can see are about to jump up, all inspiration. Because he can do yeah. that. Yeah. Yay. Because I wanted to do that. Um, cool. So uh, the first thug uh, who flips the table spins his turn. Um, he's going to leap at Yagra, and he's going to take a swing at her. Um, I'm just going to do roll or d20s because they don't have unarmed strikes. And I'm just going to make it simple. Yeah. <laughs> Yagra gets socked in the face. Um, the <laughs> yeah, she gets oh, she goodness. gets she gets rocked hard in the face uh, by this guy with some brass knuckles. Um, another one of his buddies uh, leaps in from the other side. Um, they don't believe in flanking tactics, so they're going to come in with the other side. Uh, Yagra, who is of course uh, in like some kind of leather clad armor, but uh, is not very uh, dexterous, um, basically puts up dukes to fight and she gets socked in the in the the side probably like you know lower lower body in the side these people are aiming to beat her up and drag her off they're not looking to kill her outright um it's very clear from the way they're throwing hands um that she's just gonna take a beating um Dernan quickly looks and he says no fighting and that's all he's doing at the moment but he hasn't acted yet twist Oh, I should change this okay. to something else. Twist is gonna come over here. Oh, and... I'm sorry. Am I dragging your character? Yeah, never mind. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And this is gonna cause frostbite on this one. Uh, which one is that? Sorry. Make... Oh, uh, I think that's the leader guy. Okay, the one in the middle. Gotcha. I was I was looking away for the music, so I missed it. You're good. Go ahead. He needs to make a thir- DC 13 con check. DC 13 con. Do, 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 do. What? 11. So he failed. Yep. What does it do? He takes... Oh. Two cold damage, and... I believe he has disadvantage his next check attack. Alrighty. Yeah, next weapon attack roll, so I don't know if that helps with it punchy or not. Does. Yeah, it, it's still a attack roll. I'm fine with and that. And then, as a bonus action, Twist is going to tell Pip to hit this, the, this one here. Mm-hmm. Move Pip in the same spot. And that is a I'm gonna bring up the move real quick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Twenty plus four. It's a five. Nine to hit. Nine to hit. Uh, it's not gonna hit. Uh, and that's a turn. Nope. There it is. Um, that's a turn. Yep. Uh, how much damage did you do to the the, the guy too? Gotta make sure I'm tracking that. Sorry. There we go. Okay, that would be Yagra's turn. Yagra is going to uh, finish weathering the strikes, and she says, uh, "Says your mother hit harder last night." She's gonna take a swing herself for a seven. Uh, the guy's gonna block it, and she's not gonna get anywhere with that. Calendria. Well. I believe this really strong lady. So let's go. Bup, bup, bup. Okay. Can't get any closer. So it said she's going to make a finger crossbow and Eldridge blasts her in the back. It's like, whoa, bam. Whoop. 22 well, for bam. six damn moves. <laughs> Which one was that for? the this one up top all righty so you gotta zap her for six it's gonna strike for sure are there any uh cool eldritch blast riders on there no i'm only a level one warlock all right uh yeah so you're gonna strike her for six uh she gets caught off guard by that blast as you whoop her um and it ticks over to the next person 
Lindry has the audacity to say if she does a pick on someone your own size, knowing she's probably way bigger than this Thomas. thing. Yeah. And it is just a little person. Uh, not a little person, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. Hey. Pretty cool artwork, though, if I do see Yeah, that is so. a really pretty art. Yeah, damn. Yeah, shame she's not going to make it. Um, <laughs> the next one comes over, seeing that you're the... Whoop, that's a undo. Yeah. Bryn, what's your, what's your rule on hey, non-lethal Jack spell attacks? My rule on what? Non-lethal spell attacks. If you declare you're doing a non-lethal action, then you're doing a non-lethal action. Okay, cool. Like, I can mind sliver somebody and not kill them. Yeah, their their head won't explode unless it's comedically appropriate. Uh, I just I just think of it as uh, lobotomizing. Can you do me a favor and make one of the tokens big again? I think my 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 roll twenty just froze too. So hold on. Nope, that's wrong button again. That fixed it. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, we get to kill Jack of Blades. So this this guy comes up. He's gonna, gonna take a take a thuggy swing at you. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna say that it'll still be. That's a nine. Calendria, do you happen to have an eleven AC? I do not know. She's got like her 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 empty finger gun hand and the shield on her. her I was like, like I was like, you guys literally just came out of the undermountain. You would be fully armed. <laughs> she she just like casually holds her arm up like, come on, man. And he, and he probably like had a chair, and he just like cracks it harmlessly across you. And he just kind of looks with regret, like there were mistakes made. Rose, um, I just I just glance at Dern and say, "Sorry, I'll try to take out the ta- trash quietly." Um, and I'm going to. I would like to. I'd like to deck this guy in the back of the head and push him towards Yagra. All right. Do I, for just unarmed, is it just, uh, do I just do make an athletics check to hit? Uh, nope, just roll a d20, and I don't think your proficiency gets added. Okay, so just my strength. 13? Um, 13. Not gonna hit. Alright, I'm going to... Sorry. I'm going to... I'm gonna action surge and try again. Alrighty. Rain, what's the dex mod of the person who also rolled an 8? And you know what? Uh, You go before NPCs. I'm gonna make this a menacing attack, too. Would have bet the 19 would have gone to. Oh, uh, wait a minute. If I'm flanking with Yager, would a 14 hit? Uh, 14 would not hit. Okay. 19. Right, so 19. Hit. 19 hits. All right. So um, that will be five damage plus my menacing, which is another d8. Uh, oh, I can tick it. I should have ticked it. I really like that they're expanding these character sheets to have all that stuff. So a total of seven damage, and um, and as I uh, as I hit him in the back, I'm just like, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, stop fucking up Dernan's bar. I I jeer. Yeah, what she said. And he has to make a wisdom save or be frightened of me. Wisdom save or be frightened. Yeah, that's a nine. He is legit frightened of me. He is now frightened. I will tick on the frightened condition. Where's that Macaulay Culkin freer face? There it is. Oh! Those are so scary. Frightened gives the cannot move closer to you. Uh, creature has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of its fear is within line of sight. Good thing he has his back to you. Um, can't willingly <laughs> move closer to the source of its fear. Okay, so he has disadvantage uh, while the fear is up. Uh, right uh, he goes to turn around to look at who hit him and immediately pisses his pants. Begonia. I haven't put the eye patch back on. So I have a fun turn in mind. I'm going to, uh, first, 
I'm going to meta magic twin spell. Mm -hmm. And then Ooh. I'm going to use my bonus action to hex the furthest one away. Um, how do I do the thingy this thing? Here. Holding it quick. Yeah, that one. And the frightened one. And the hex is intelligence. Uh, and saving I'll... throw? Yeah, no. Uh, oh, hex. just a, a penalty. Yeah, hex the. Do, do, do. Yeah, so they just take the hex. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on, I think. Hold it's on, bonus me... damage when they get. Place the curse until the end of the spell. Is there. There's no uh, save. So, yeah, just. Yep. Until the end of the spell, they take bonus damage from me, and they have uh, disadvantage on intelligence saves. And with my action, I'm going to uh, drink more of my wine and take another bite of the delicious, delicious boar. And that's my turn. Alrighty. Just color coding these guys to make it a little easier. There we go. Okay. Uh, that brings us. But you can't cast two cantrips in the same turn, even though even if one's a bonus and one's a full yeah, after, right? they got to be yeah. different. Uh, that brings us to uh, Blue, who has a turn now. He is not afraid of Rose, so he's gonna go like this. He's gonna come around. He's gonna get flanking with his buddy. And bloop, bloop. Uh, 14 or 14 brings that up to a 16 to hit. Uh, that does hit because I don't have my shield with me, so. Alrighty. Uh, so he's going to do, uh, it's one plus his strength modifier. Actually, I said they were using brass knuckles, so I'll just make it a d4 um, plus his strength. It's going to be 2 plus his strength, which is 2. So you take 4 damage as he uh, catches you in the side. Yeah, he just kind of looks and he's just like, hmm. Uh, this one still wants to fight Yagra because that's what they're here for. Uh, can I get the flank with the buddy? That's uh, going to hit with that. So they they catch Yagra um, and they, uh, kind of like, kind of like somebody else, they grabbed a chair and they're just doing property damage uh, over Yagra's back. And Yagra gets hit in the back with this uh, this bench or this chair. Um, Stop with the chairs! This guy's afraid of Rose and he's gonna just go like that which does in fact provoke. Don't break him with your knee like Batman. Anyone? If it's flank or 20, 13, if it's 21 flank. would be flank, because, yeah, you initiate it when he starts to move. All right, that's another five. Just flat five? Yep. Yeah. All right. Yep, 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 five. Uh, da, da. Um, it's the top of the round. Um, Durden looks annoyed. He pulls the great sword from, from the wall, and he says, I said no fighting! Cut one of these people in half, and the blood's gonna get everywhere, and I'm not gonna want to eat the pork anymore. Nope. Go over here. Do I get a stat block for Durnin? Feels, Feels like, like it's. I, I think there was, and I think it was one of those stupid ones, stupidly high ones. Oh, he does have a stat block. Oh, well, yeah, because he's a high level adventurer. Um, oh, actually, he's only a CR9. Huh. He's oh. been retired for a while. He's got a named weapon, Grim Vaults. Uh, it didn't roll. Um, or it didn't roll for you guys. That's a 22 to hit. Uh, if the target is an object, the hit is instead the hit instead deals 16 slashing damage. What? Damn. Oh, your German rolls. Make sure. he's, he's, he's all about one specific thing, wrecking shit. Hold on. If the target... If the target is a creature and... Oh, okay. If he gets a critical, he does just extra stupid damage. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> on a roll of 20, he lops off one of the target's limbs. Hmm. All right. 
He just does <laughs> he just does extra damage and and delimbs people with his sword. Um, so he comes in, and you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna just say he does it because that's cool as hell. Um, he comes in. He he hops over the bar with this great sword. He's like, I said no fighting. Now get out. And he brings a, a underhanded kind of golf swing on this guy. And Calindria, you had enough time to see this guy uselessly break uh, a stool over you. And as you turn to regard him, Durnan just kind of looms over him from behind. And this sweeping strike is enough to send him over this way. And his legs didn't follow. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, so he, he gets he gets punted over here. And this guy is out. Oh, Take the deck has been cut. Those floors are nice. Maloon, he just cut his legs off. Twist, you're up. <laughs> Maloon, Maloon is like, yeah, that's why I didn't get in there. <laughs> so Twist comes down here. It comes right along with her and goes, Next. And Twist is going to use Produce Flame. Produce Flame? It's going to get her legs cut off now. <laughs> Whap blue. <laughs> Whap that blue. Hits. 24 to hit. And just That's set their pants nice. on fire. Yeah. Witcher lion. <laughs> <laughs> Let her have with panic. I'm not lying. Then why are your pants on fire? Hmm. All right. Three fire. Just it, shatter, right? Yeah, just just shatter the whole area. Um, yeah, Pip's can... just gonna hang out with me. Uh, this one, this one looks over at their their legless friend uh, as they're just like laying there grabbing what's left of their knees um, and she's going to need to make a, a will save to stay here. I just, um, I just can't I'm, my head towards the door. I'm going... Yeah. You're going to what? Never mind. Okay. Um, she kind of she kind of looks and she's like, fuck this. And she's going to spend her turn to move. Provokes an attack of opportunity. I do not attack. Alright. She's going to drag I'm... she's going to drag her friend out. Yeah, I'm. Rose is very much here to 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 clean up the clean, clean out the yeah, the mess. No problem. It's the open door. You just see a trail of blood following. It. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they they are like fuck this, and they grab their friend. Um. Yagra's gonna turn to another one and be like. You should follow your smart friend. And she's going to attempt to intimidate uh, Red. Yagra. She's going to use her strength to do this. Yes. Oh, wait, hold on. She actually oh. has, a, she has a plus two to intimidation, so it's going to actually be an 18. And, um, oh, I love it. Ooh. I don't love it. Old school D and Nat twenty. Uh, they 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 uh, they they kind of hold up on on that. Uh, Calendria. Well, now that the dude who tried to hit her with a cheap wrestling move didn't work out, and seeing that Duran's uh, getting choppy, she's going to escort herself over here and take out her mace <laughs> to, to give him a a, a non lethal stop breaking stuff bonk. Oh baby, <laughs> hang on. Wait, it gets better. Okay, you ready? It's getting crits tonight. It's it's okay. You ready? Just to just just to make sure. And after he goes down, the, uh, put pump the divine smite into that. Oh no! <laughs> Goodness, you're gonna bonk the hell out of this guy. It's like oh, I didn't put divine smite in my thing. It's just like a puff of smoke, and the head is gone. I said non-lethal. Oh, you you said non-lethal. <laughs> the the oh, guy's cranium didn't say non-lethal. Dang. <laughs> All right. Uh, At least it cauterized the wound. Uh, dang, it so doesn't on, have on, on this poor fool. Yeah, on the, the dude that's scared of, of uh, Rose and started the whole thing. All right. Is there smite damage on there, too? 
Uh, 2d8, so... Wouldn't that be 4d8? Yeah, with the crit. A low ball, but you know, there you go. 14 extra damage plus 16 uh, magical from the, the enchanted or the hex bladed oh, bong. Yeah, 30. Okay. Um, he's not down, but that hurt. It hurt a lot. It hurt a lot, a lot. Um, it said, he oh. said no fighting, bonk. <laughs> All right, this guy had multi attack. <laughs> that probably would have made him scarier. Oh, well. Um, that guy's gone. Uh, Rose, hey, you're up. Uh, I would like to. I would like to shove this guy towards Durnan. Oh, no. <laughs> well, yeah. if you wanted to clean up, so. <laughs> Please, by all means. Pitching a slow ball to a slugger. Natural 20. Oh my god, come on! This is insane. I, I just grabbed the back oh, of their coat, spin them around, and kick them in the ass so that they stumble towards And Durnan. they do, and they stumble towards Durnan. Um, Durnan, I'm going to just give him a free reaction. You, you set this up so nicely for him. Please give me a nat 20. Oh, would nah. crazy. All right. Uh, it's not, but it, it sends this guy stumbling, and, and Durnan... Uh, Realizing that he had delegged uh, the other guy, and realizing that Bonnie's gonna have to clean up, uh, he he brings the flat of the blade up instead, and it clotheslines this poor man, uh, and it sends him sends him stumbling as he slips on the blood of his friend and goes prone. Uh, anything else for you, Rose? Um, I just I'm just gonna get between them and make sure that they're. Sure. Begonia. Yeah, I, I get, I get no, no. the the advantage. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, Begonia. It means the, the reaction oh, when going, the guy tries to run away in terror. I'm going to uh, twin spell again. Use another sorcery point. This time I'm going to, uh, on the two people with uh, intelligence disadvantage, I'm going to uh, mind sliver them. Uh, all right, so this will be uh, the the leader first. Uh, keep in mind this is a disadvantage roll, so that's a nine. Uh, you see a little trickle of blood come out of his ears, and then the other one also with disadvantage is a seven. So uh, you got to roll your hex damage as well. Oh yeah. Oh no! <laughs> uh, oh, I'm rolling as me, not as the gun. Uh, seven isn't enough to bring him down. He's got a little bit more going for him, and then your other one is this one over here. But yeah, this uh, this mind sliver is Rose screaming. He said no fighting in their head, uh, and that's just... what causes the seven damage. All right, I like it. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Right. I continue eating. Uh, this poor guy. Ethan Malone Company. This poor guy tries to get up. Spends half his movement doing so. Uh, when he gets up, he wants to... He, he, he kind of is staggered. And he makes the mistake of throwing a punch at Dernan. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, no, dude. It's a four. Um, yep. He, he throws this punch, and it does one of these where it hits. And you see Dernan's head turn just kind of does this and looks at the guy and the guy just kind of gulps uh this one he'll need to make another save because the mind sliver and watching her friend get delayed uh, okay now her her will has broken um and she's gonna try and run but yagra's gonna get a, a reaction on her and she's gonna roll Ah, it's not a nat 20. All right. So she <laughs> she takes a swing, but it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, the girl tries to go. She's going to slip on some blood, catch herself, and keep running. So I'm going to take her off the initiative. Oh, did I delete an extra one? I don't think so. Okay. I saw, I saw it flicker, so I wasn't sure. Uh, hey, Twist, you're up. Oh, I did delete one. Yeah, where's I, Boss Man? He goes boss. for me. 
thought so. I was like... Alright. So, uh, I'm a mistake. No, it's wish okay. The, uh, I wish the character mancer put the uh, meta magic types on the character sheet, but it doesn't, and I need to open that book. Alright, so this guy, uh, he can't move any closer to Rose, which means he's stuck. He's not really stuck, but he's gonna he's gonna try and see how well his constitution holds out. It's a ten. That's fine. He'll um hang on, let me let me post because I, I think that I don't know how long it lasts. It's probably only for a round. Until the next turn. Yeah, okay. So he's not frightened of you anymore. It's okay, he is being bullied between very two very large muscular two women. Very large women. He he's still frightened. And the petite women. And, and the large women. And, and Duralist. Right, and so, the one-eyed woman. <laughs> so technically he's supposed to get three attacks, so I'm going to roll all three at once. And uh, only, Baby one, only one is going to get through to Yagra. Uh, actually, Yagra only has 11 AC. Two are going to get through. Two punches. And so with his strength modifier, it's three damage, which becomes six damage. Yagra's getting, getting some punches in. Um, hey, Twist, you're up. Uh, Twist is going to have Pip move up one spot. Then she's going to turn him in the air, aim the head down. Okay, Pip, it's not a bar fight until somebody gets hit in the nuts. Go! Um, um just, just a quick note, uh, Dernan does not have a turn. I know he though. doesn't. He goes when I feel like it. He is the rule of cool. <laughs> I'm guessing a nine doesn't hit. A nine does not hit. However, I will give advantage for rule of cool, and also you guys do still have that uh, inspiration. Oh yeah, inspiration. Uh, fourteen. A uh, fourteen does not hit. However, you still have inspiration. I will use inspiration then. That's. A reroll or just a it's a D D8. D8. Awesome. Oh wow, three fingers is a three fingers well, is a very talented bard. Three fingers is a very talented bard. Uh, that is going to hit. I mean, he's playing ballroom blitz. What do you? What kind of slub do you think he is? Okay, so he's only doing it on three strings too. The madman. One D four plus two for six oh. stun damage. All right, uh, he's going to make a con save. While prone, he or become, prone. or become sterile. He hits a higher oh. octave. His child in the future disappears from existence. <laughs> we have entered the other timeline. Mm -hmm. So just hugs Pip. He did it. Yeah. Anything else for your turn? I know. I <laughs> no, kinda, that'd be it. I kind of zoomed it, but okay. Um, he starts to go prone, but Yagra doesn't let him. She's gonna, she's gonna roll for a grapple. Uh, I'm gonna say that's an advantage because Kalindria's there setting her up, um, and so she she grabs this guy and she's gonna spend her her attack action to uh, suplex him into the table. No, so not the table. That's more collateral. Yagra, do you want to lose your legs? It's fine. She suplex. She suplexes him into the table, uh, and as he gets just completely decimated into this table. Uh, that's where we wrap up combat because the other guy uh, is not going to make it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, look, Dernan probably would have let you run, but then you fucked up. Yeah, yeah. this guy, this guy punched Dernan, and so Dernan basically, you see this guy get yeeted over over a table. And he just kind of keeps following him. The guy's like backing away slowly, and he makes the mistake of getting right up against the yawning portal, and Dernan just gives him the old Spartan kick. And he goes over the side. I, I I I feel like he I feel like he should do like the little thing that he takes the coin purse off the belt and then does it. He just like more collateral. Yeah, probably, <laughs> very likely. Um, but yeah, so he he gives him he gives him the old Spartan kick after taking a coin purse off of his belt, and the man goes tumbling ass over kettle uh, off the side, uh, and the echo of his fall is the last thing you hear as uh, Three Strings takes the cue to wrap up the music. 
Well, enjoy the ride down. It's a lot faster, but a lot less friendly at the bottom. Chris is gonna come over this way. And... Alun, I've never been in a bar fight before. That was awesome. <laughs> it was pretty great. Uh, you guys didn't die either. That's good. Rose is gonna start picking up like broken chair pieces. Yeah, Rose is like, or uh, Kalindri like scoops up the unconscious dude that got bodied through the table to like get him out of it. <laughs> like, all right, come on. Where you, um, drag, where you the, drag this guy? Begonia's gonna head to the back to look for Bonnie and ask for a mop and bucket. Uh, like she'll... Yeah, Bonnie. Bonnie's quick to get the mop and bucket, and uh, she I offer to take the responsibility. That's fine. Uh, she's more than happy to have you do that. She rushes over to Yagra and slaps a, a big old slab of steak over the black eye that's starting to form. That's okay. It's cure wounds on her for five healing. All right. Bunk. One you throws the the dude's body after the two that are all the ones that ran away. Like, hey, you forgot something. <laughs> you forgot the trash. Throw him out. He's gone. Take his Rose, did the mage hit you too? Oh, me? Yeah. One got a hit in, but it's nothing. Yeah, she took it like a champ. That's pretty... Pip's coming over for... a bunk as well. For six. I <laughs> she had to get her on the side that she couldn't see out of, because... Yeah, <sighs> cheap shot. Well, appreciate oh. it. Welcome. Apologies, Darnan. We didn't... Yeah, you know, wanna fight stuff. We just wanted it over quick for you. Dernan kind of snorts and he says, "They paid for damages." I could fix the things too. Appreciate oh. it. And uh, Bonnie is go about doing mending. Bonnie has pulled up a stool and Yagra's kind of like leaned back into it in that kind of tough girl way where she just slouches a little bit and is slab of meat is over over one of her eyes and she just says oh fucking xanathars she spits uh, a broken tusk and she says ah fuck that was my best tusk oh shoot xanathars uh good question um would uh let me post this real quick wait is this yeah I'm gonna post this real quick. Um, would my background allow me to know who this Anathar is in? And conversely, would I know, would I recognize the pendant she wears, or would I have to make that? You'd have to make rolls, because the Xanathars are not mercenaries. Okay, rolls it is. I get where you're coming from, but they are not mercenaries. Natural 20. Natural 20? Uh, well, that's good enough. Uh. Uh, let me barely. Think. Let me barely. Barely. <laughs> barely good enough. <laughs> Actually, it's as best as it could be. Um, you so... know, in one D and D, they're making a natural twenty automatically succeed on every single skill check. Oh, absolutely. So, like, you could and... be you. You could be level one and trying to make a persuasion to have a king give over his entire kingdom. That's not how that works. But yes, we. But that's how they worded it in the rules for one D and D, and it's silly. Oh, that's that's well, not. It's just the best possible outcome. That's, that's not how it works. Yeah, it's it, it's the the king will be amused that you have the audacity to ask for such a thing and wouldn't have you immediately executed. Hmm. Kind, of like, ah, yeah. uh, kind of like, kind of, kind of, in a way. Yeah, it, it's a much, it's a much better success. They, they're, they're much more willing to listen to what you have to say and don't uh, have you thrown in prison outright for your audacity. Um, just like a natural one is an automatic failure, where it's, it's not you slip and break your neck, but you definitely slip and look silly for the thing you were trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, anyways. Uh, yeah, Xanathars. Um, you are able to remember the name. Um, the Xanathars is a guild of... Um, is, is a crime organization that operates within the city. Um, they haven't ventured out too far beyond Waterdeep, um, but they they have their, their fingers in most things. Um, smuggling, poisons, drugs... Um, if there's something that can turn a profit for them, the Xanathar um, has has their has their hold on it, as it were. 
Um, there's rumors that the Xanathar Skilled is run by a uh, beholder, but no one has ever seen the Xanathar, uh, only its representatives, so whether that is true or not uh, remains to be seen. Um, in regards to her pendant, um, you recognize it as the Zentarum symbol. Um, the Zentarum technically are mercenaries, but they're also more. The Zentarum are weird. They portray themselves as several things at once. They're mercenaries, they're merchants, they're black marketeers, they're crime syndicates, they're everything. And so you may know the Zentarum uh, as a mercenary force, and the Zentarum tend to be a um, a sword coast spanning operation. Um, they they are all over the place, and so for the Zentarum to be here as well is no real surprise. The Xanathar start becoming a real problem. I have half a mind to drop a giant purple worm on their base. That is oddly specific. Yeah, but it would be amusing. It sure would. I haven't seen a purple worm be dropped on anything, really. Um, well, I don't have the mending spell, uh, so just kind of like glancing to Yagra. I got it. Bad blood? <sighs> Bad deal. I can't uh, claim any real responsibility for it, but they seem to think that any centaurum is fair game. And she spits a little bl bit of blood on the floor that uh, bon Begonia is uh, busy cleaning, and Bonnie slaps her in the arm, and she says, No spitting in the bar. Sorry. Uh, Begonia, you do have an easy time cleaning up the blood since it's relatively fresh. Yeah, I... I finished the job. I'm like... I don't know. It's not gonna stay in the wood. I guess. <laughs> while I'll do it, I'm I'm whistling while I work. But mm. yeah, I'm kind of minding my own business, but listening to the conversation. Cleaning just... up the blood. Cleaning up the blood. Hmm. What's this kind of thing happen often? What well, I I haven't lived in water deep long, but so I don't I know what a Xanathar or Zentarum is. And... Well, between between just you happy and to all. Be here. I don't know where you guys have been in the last couple days, but... Uh, Twice was, towards the hole? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was speaking rhetorically. Um, you're not Zentarum, so I don't need to tell you any of this, but you had my back in that fight. Uh, I hope it doesn't put a target on your backs, but the Zentarum and the Xanathars have been in war for last couple days what I heard was a deal went bad and the Xanathar killed a bunch of Zentarum and it's been open fighting in the streets a uh, gang war? well it's not an official land war we didn't bring our elephants <laughs> I'd like I to see that. an elephant <laughs> Anyways, oh, when when the swelling goes down, Bonnie, can you cook this steak for me? <laughs> First of well, all, I would hope it wouldn't get wasted, and it feels like you'd be the only one who could eat it, because that would be gross otherwise. Yeah, you I don't. I'm in rudely. Into you, don't, you don't serve my steak to other people. That's just rude. I call dibs. <laughs> It's, I mean, not rude were... it's not rude because it's gross, it's rude because it's mine. It's rude because <laughs> it's mine. I earned it. You, I, I read you, win, a, you win a fight, you get a stake. That's how it works in the tribes, and well, that's how it should work here. Well, Yagra is your name, right? We still have some... Uh, we, we have, like, a whole-ass pig. I've been trying to eat it because I hate wasting, but I'm so full. Oh, I could eat a There's whole a pig ass. over there. He's still going. He hasn't stopped. <laughs> I could eat a whole pig ass. Well, you can have that with your steak. You can have a 
pig and pork. You could have a pig and cow sandwich, something like that. I oh, don't know. I'm I'm queen in blood. I'm gonna go. I'm all like, nervous because I yeah, like make women make sure you wash your here. hands. Bloodborne pathogens are a real blight on this city. Oh God. Yeah, I'll make sure. Okay, bye. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Hopefully this war doesn't cause too much trouble. I'm hoping not, but if more of those pipsqueaks try and come at me, they're going to need at least twice that many. Three times, even. Or did it come to the wrong barn, upset the wrong oh, owner? Fine. Yeah, they probably shouldn't try and fight me here. That's not very smart of them. Yeah. Yeah, they lost their legs. <laughs> yeah, next time they might lose their head. <laughs> I do check the uh uh if is there like a rules board or anything? Yeah, it says no fighting. It's yeah. directly underneath the, the sword. Um, it's all is... the plaque says. It doesn't tell you what the sword's name, it just says no fighting. <laughs> no fighting. Um actually let me see if there's something for the yawning portal. I'm not depriving you of helpful information. I was going to ask if we were taking a break tonight. I need to use the bathroom. We can I could take just a, run we can and take a, No, we can take a break right now if you like. Okay. We, can, we can take a short break. Uh, yeah, everybody get up, have a rest, uh, and we'll be back shortly. But there's only like an hour left, so. Me. Do it now. Let's go. We'll be back. E horror. E horror. Mute mics are hot, even if mine is muted. Gotcha.
the back yet, everyone. And I can turn into the room. <laughs> Let's. So how's everybody out in chat land tonight? Chris session, I think, is going pretty good and having fun. Still trying to get a feel for twists, though. I am currently doing art for her, which I had hoped to get done before the first session, but having so much trouble with her face. Honestly, faces are one of the things I struggle with the most. Yeah, I mostly draw people, Nix. It takes a lot of practice. Getting the proportions right, you know, you have to either do you want to say you want to do like the seven head or eight head. Eight is more like the perfected body ratio, where seven is more realistic. I think it is head, nipple, belly button, crotch. These. What did I just come back to? Oh, uh, proportions mm. for people. I just heard nipples, and then I was like, what? Oh, thanks, Stefan. We could. I'd love to give her a shot for you if you want that. <laughs> yeah, came back to crotch. It's true. Nipples and crotch. Like, how's it going to make someone Yeah, exactly. Say the words of power and I appear. <laughs> um, Shay's in the bathroom, so as soon as everybody's back and ready, we can continue for this last hour. Had a really good time so far. Mm, I'm glad. This is a fun game. He's definitely off to a good start. Yeah, I'm trying to still place her on Twist's personality to be. I'm burning with fresh air popped popcorn. Ooh. Oh, I want popcorn. Don't you know I'm a I'm a baby about salt, so I have to severely reduce my intake till like my heart gets under control. Mm -hmm. I have like a box of forty theater style microwave popcorn, but uh, I just grabbed the last muffin. Um, for How did dare you want you? it before no, I fine. eat it? Nope, I ate two. Because now breakfast. I want popcorn. I ate two for <laughs> breakfast, so you're good. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I'm going to eat a muffin, and then after game, I'll eat popcorn while oh, no, watching bullshit on YouTube. I'm going to go to bed that's after life. this. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Some of us Probably still have to go to idea. work stupid early in the morning. Mm. Uh, I do. I got to work at 7 tomorrow. Look, it's only like only for, what, another two weeks, two and then weeks. you get to you get to enjoy a vacation of, of glory. Yeah, yeah. I got, oh. I got, I got, uh, well, it's not hit, really two weeks. It's more like one, two, three. I hit my 10 years with my company this coming up year, so I get four weeks 12, of vacation. 12 days, Ooh. Frost. 12 days. Damn, and nice. All that vacation time. And my uncle's been working at Walmart for like, like he's, he's past the 25 years, so he gets like, like literally two months off in vacation <laughs> if he wanted it. 
That's nice. Yeah, I, I and a lifetime membership to a lifetime discount too. I hit the I hit the point for my job last year where I get to see cool perks. When you hit three years, your vacation time goes from four to six hours. You know how long it's going to take for me to hit eight? Fifteen. I have to. I have to. Gross. Yeah, I have to. I have to be in the job for another twelve years to get a solid eight hours. Uh, oh, eight hours of what? Of, of, of paid time off, uh, holi- or annual leave, if uh, for every pay period instead of it being. Oh, you, you get time off by pay period. See, I just get like here's four weeks for the whole year. Have fun. No, oh, we, and you get you get eight sick days. Yeah. That, that's it. We 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 earn our time. Uh, you earn. You earn, you start at four and four, and then three years it becomes six, and then 15 years it becomes eight. That's such a weird, I have 192 like, hours of paid sick leave. Mm, it's such a nice. weird steep hill you have to climb to get like a full day's worth of pay every time you've earned stall. Mm-hmm. It's I can't earn any more that's how much I have, and that's how little I've used it. I mean, hey, I worked in a deli for almost four years, and uh, you only earned, like, I think one day every uh, four months you worked there. Jesus, that's awful. <laughs> um, and it was in Florida, so, you know, if a hurricane hit, you couldn't use, like, you had to debate whether you really wanted to be sick or stay home or go to work. Uh, I would definitely uh, stay, stay and not go to the deli during a hurricane. Yeah, it seems like a yeah, stay home Sometimes type of deal. you gotta pay bills or you will die. Well, if you have sick We live in a fucking society, apparently. We live in a society. <laughs> the only nice thing is, most of the time, nobody came in, so you got paid to stand around for nine hours waiting for people and eating the chicken wings that nobody was buying. Listen, I that was the one thing I liked about the, the Froyo shop, too, was one, I could, I could sit in the back and watch YouTube or play D&D, which I did, um, and I could eat frozen yogurt all day because his uh his stance was you can eat it within reason just don't go crazy and don't waste any and it's like fair it will don't tell my boss but i fell asleep for an hour today and nobody will ever notice <laughs> you work from home <laughs> nobody will ever know <laughs> i i mean they're surveilling the shit out of everybody but like my job is very specific and requires a lot of reading of documents so like you can't tell me i'm not doing my job a new follower has joined naomi's boss i heard Uh that (laughs) oh fuck andrew don't tell your boss (laughs) um it's cool i'm i'm supposed to be doing work i'm just watching a stream it's fine you know yeah it's it's only here for uh reasons um, anyways, hey, so we're back, and uh, everybody's had a chance to, to kind of wind down and talk with uh, our good friend Yagra. Um, Bonnie seems to be kind of doting over her to make sure she's okay. And uh, Magonia, as you're going, and I'm going to just kind of move you, um, as you're going to uh, put the way the mop and bucket, uh, you kind of head over and approach this nice, nice looking fireplace. And there's a man who's seated, uh, drinking a large glass of wine uh, over at this table. And he says, uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me, uh, young lady. Could you, uh, could you do me a favor? Come here, please. Uh, yeah, sure. I like your accent and I will ah, go over there. Happy to, uh, to uh, regale you with more of my soothing voice uh, then. Allow me to uh, introduce myself. Uh, I am a Volafamp Gadarm. Oh, a, uh, are you? Ah, uh, see, si, it is me. Uh, you know uh, who I am? My reputation uh, precedes me. I have heard your name before at least once. I would hope so. I am a world famous traveler, author, connoisseur, adventurer, they say as well. Hmm. Well, what does the. What does the glorious follow need with little old me? Uh, you are not a so little, uh, my, my uh, desert flower. But uh, I, uh, I noticed uh, how well you and your friends uh, handled themselves against those uh, rapscallions. Would you uh, be interested in partaking in more work? Uh, it depends on what the work is. Uh, 
I could not like to problems. figure out why we're fighting people before we fight people, but this situation, I don't know. It seems I, like they were bullying. I can assure you it is honest work for an honest man. I am the mm. honest man, not you, of course. Well, I was, I was going to say, I mean, for every good rumor I've heard about you, I've also heard a bad one. Oh, all lies, I promise. <laughs> oh, I, I can tell. You're a charmer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have, uh, I have been known to be quite the lady killer in my time. That is true. Um, yeah, what's the word? Well, let me hear it, and then I'll give you an answer. Well, to be honest with you, uh, I can be honest with my new friends, can I not? Of course you can. And I sit down, and I, uh, I say, Bonnie, can I have a glass of wine? Certainly, I'll get right on that. And she just kind of like looks away from Yagra for a moment. So just a moment. And she uh, goes and fetches that. And before long, uh, you guys have a nice charcuterie board set in front of you. And there's uh, two glasses of wine. And Volo says, I am going to need uh, a bit of uh, an entourage, as it were. Uh, my latest book is going to be coming out, you see. Uh, Volos in Kyridion to Making Friends. Um, it is a book uh, that is uh, very self-explanatory if you read the title, but uh, it, it uh, talks about uh, safer ways to travel the world, uh, how to make our friends and allies in unusual sorts of ways. Um, but uh, I need an entourage to uh, help uh, demonstrate this uh, book's a finer points by showing that uh, even a Volo uh, can make uh, several friends from several backgrounds. Uh, more importantly, he slides a piece of paper over so to you. Are you, are, are you asking us to go make friends with people that are hard to make friends with? Or No, 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 no. You are here to be uh, my friends. And he taps the table uh, where he has started to slide this paper over to you. And his fingers are directly tapping on the piece of paper. No, 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 my friend. I need you to be there to be my friends at this uh, book signing party. He taps the table again. Uh, got it. So I, uh, I take a sip of the wine and I wink at him. And I can, I can consult my friends and see how they feel about it. But you can sign me up. I see. And he kind of uh, looks you in the eyes and he looks down at the table where his hand is touching the paper and he looks back at you and he looks down again and he taps the table. I take the paper. Rose, Rose just feels this <laughs> nudge again so his clutcher goes, what the hell are they doing over there? This guy's just hitting the table repeatedly. <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought you were saying the there's a wire they're listening to me. <laughs> but it's fine. That's the yeah, yeah, that's why he, why he slid a paper over to you. Um, no, no. Yeah, you, so they wouldn't hear what he's trying to say. Yeah, when you when you pick up the paper and you 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 take it and you kind of look at it casually, it says they're listening. They're trying yeah, to kill it. me. Yeah. All right. Um. So, like I said, you can you can sign me on. Um, Wonderful! It's very happy to uh, know that Volo has uh, friends in high places. I, I'm not... I wouldn't say high places. We're in the Yawning Portal. It's, a, you know, a middle place. The point. Yawning Portal is a great establishment. It's a... Oh, it's a, it's a wonderful establishment, but if you put it on a pedestal, it becomes a terrible one. Yeah. It's a fantastic establishment! Rose, come here! It ain't no spirit tap, let me tell you what. Spear tap doesn't exist. Guys, I, I multiverse. Found, uh... Ooh. <laughs> uh, so I'm just, I'm, I'm just like, ah, right. Come bring, on. bring everybody. Come on, let's make it a party. We got, we got cured meats. You want well, some salted? I, I, I've been just, I've been trying to see Maloon's room for like the past half. Hour. You know, Go right, fuck let's... Maloon. Go do that. But everybody else, come here. <laughs> You know that's fair. Good. Go. Go. Enjoy your your payout. Wink. Wink. <laughs> Literally just says out loud. Wink. wink. Did Did you just say wink? Maloon's been eating well, for like I'm... three hours. You sure you want to do that right now? 
Maloon. Okay, Maloon. look. To <laughs> uh, I'll let him digest. Maloon's like, like this isn't the only ass I plan to eat tonight. <laughs> I guess I said, Wink. I'm standing on your bad side. I know you can't see me, Rose. I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'm That's gonna, actually I'm my gonna good move side. Twist over as well, so they don't feel excluded. Pip, however, is gonna stay with Maloon Wink. <laughs> Metal bird eating. That's yes, gonna be interesting. The, the, the constructed homunculi is eating. It's just doing that bird thing where it gets into just the replicating humans. Soon it's gonna develop consciousness. It's yep. fine. It's, it's just gonna. It's just gonna say run. <laughs> run. I can't help you. Yep. So you've all gathered around, um, and I assume Begonia has a chance to pass the paper to everybody to see. That it says they're listening. They're trying to kill me. Oh. Mm, so mm. a job. Uh, yes, I, I have a, a, a party to attend. And uh, what better way for uh, Volotham uh, to make an impression than to have uh, several lovely women uh, as his entourage. Uh, and he wiggles his uh, thick, bushy eyebrows and his uh, equally thick uh, mustache. Actually, let me give you guys. Your mustache nice... is so cool. I love <laughs> it. Main gen PCs. Follow them. Follow Kadarm. Boom. Here he is. Look at him in all his glory. I love Volo. He's a piece Volo... of shit, but I love him. And Volo <laughs> loves you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know he does. And then I, he's uh... leaving. Bye. <laughs> uh, tomorrow night, there is a party at the Sparant Tower. Uh, also known as the uh, one of the uh, dormant walking statues. You know this one, yes? It has a very interesting story. History check! Hurting? Uh, eh, sure. Uh, it's, I swear I'll try. I, lo Rose, I love the initiative. Have... Rose, why do you Hurting. always have to know everything? I want to hear his story. It's Bolo. Lindsay doesn't know shit. A it's, it's a pretty statue. Let me tell you what. Because I like to, I like to know stuff. Mm -hmm. I can appreciate that. Yeah, it, it's like there's roles for these. It's like there's <laughs> roles for this. Yeah. So, um, Twist and, and Rose would both know the the history of the Sparant Tower. Um, it is located inside of the hollowed out Hawkman Colossus statue. Um, the statue itself was hollowed out from the pelvis up to the top of the hawk's head. Um, it is turned into an establishment that is held by uh, wealthier residents that live within the castle ward. And it's gained its name from Lady Sparant, who supervised the renovations personally. Friends of Lady Sparant or patrons with enough funds can rent the tower for balls, festivities, or a prolific author's newest release party. It bears the resemblance of an Aarakocra with wings tucked tightly behind its back and its left arm outstretched as if to motion stop. However, both its right foot and right arm have been destroyed, causing the entire tower to tilt towards the northeast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a giant hawk statue. Oh, that's a fancy place. Do we have to draw fancy? Uh, Dress fancy? You can... <laughs> that's not how that is spelled. <laughs> <laughs> You can uh, you can address as uh, fancy as you like. Uh, yeah, just know that this is a, a book signing party, so uh, I would expect uh, my entourage uh, to dress uh, to impress. Well, will you be providing the the funds for garments for your uh, book signing? And I oh. flick my eyelashes. Would that I were able to, but uh, book signing parties and the cost of Producing books themselves are so expensive. What I ah, but you you've sold so many already. Speaking of you know, such a uh, oh my god, uh, that's so loud. Uh, my ears. Um, <laughs> no, not you. It was the <laughs> notification on oh. on Streamlab. He says he says ah, you would like to think of that, but uh, 
royalties for book selling uh, does not actually come in as quickly as uh, one would think. And uh, the best I can offer you right now is an autographed copy of my newest Inkaritian Guide to Making Friends. That would be a oh. very valuable book for someone such as yourself. Oh, and it's before publication. This isn't even an edition. A yet. first edition signing before publication. Just think of how much value it would have. Uh, and uh, if uh, it turns out this is not a satisfactory enough, I'm sure you and I could negotiate a better rate for you. He wiggles his mustache again. I'm interested. Is it in worth this more story? if it's personalized or not personalized? Uh, hey, I'll take the book. I, I have really been asked to. Pretty dress I've had my eye on, and your book signing would have been a perfect opportunity to. You are a very talented it. adventurer. I am sure you could make enough of gold within one night to find a distress. I believe in you. You have more than capable. Are abilities. you calling me a hooker? Ah, uh, more of a prostitute. But, uh, no. <laughs> you seem more than uh, capable of being able to procure the funds yourself. Uh, yeah, as part of that capability comes from getting paid for what we do. It's a true. I'm paying you an exposure at this book. Oh, you fuck. I stand up and start to leave. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> We were Mug more, lifts up and starts to walk away. <laughs> as, as much as everybody <laughs> starts leaving. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I was in. They can kill you now. <laughs> <laughs> you can die. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm... Volo's here. <laughs> hey, hey, we got Volo. We got Volo right here. <laughs> See, nobody cares. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when you're like, look, this mustache is the only reason I'm still at the table. Unlike these other sharks, I'm not out yet, okay? Let's let's talk turkey. Yes, yeah, so let's We're... talk turkey. Uh, what can you offer us? And uh, is uh, my book not good enough for you? Oh no, the book's nice. I, I I do enjoy a good book. But you see, the problem is I've got one eye now, and it's really hard to read. I haven't gotten used to that. Oh um, my goodness! I didn't so... even notice. Uh -huh. I'm so sorry for your loss. Um. What else can you offer besides the book? Can you add anything to that? Hmm. Hmm. And he kind of twirls one of the thick curly sides of the mustache and he says, I can offer you all a free week's stay at my luxurious villa. How does that sound? You will be pampered, you will be wined, you will be dined. You will not be disappointed. I promise. Where is your villa? In the uh, illustrious Troll Skull Alley, of course. And uh, when is this week? This isn't like a timeshare. It would have to. It would have to be. A, it would have to be discussed after the party. If I am not dead, then we can make arrangements for it. But, uh, you well, can't, we you can't just show up there if I am dead. I, I can't help you get in there. You wouldn't have access to it or a key no. or anything. It would be very. Oh, important. I mean, we can write a contract. I can make sure it's legally bonding. There's oh, no I, I am a legitimate businessman. Of course, we can make a contract. But uh, keep in mind that this party is for tomorrow. So I kind of need your uh, okay yes now if we're going to be doing such a thing. How much would a nice dress cost? Uh, I do not wear Fine them clothes very... are like 25 gold pieces. I was like, I, I, I do not wear them very often, so I am not so sure myself. Oh, you laugh, but uh, there was a time where Volo had to uh, disguise himself as a fair maiden to infiltrate a uh, orc stronghold. Oh, I can tell. You keep up such a womanly physique. Yes, oh, I will have to tell you. I will have to tell you the story. Uh, the famous hero, Dritz Duerden, and I both uh, disguised ourselves as fair maidens to sneak inside to rescue his companion, Wulfgar. It was a harrowing story. Now, I could imagine cool. you doing that. I don't... I've heard some things no. about Dritz. Dritz Duerden is a manly man who is not afraid to put on a pretty pink dress to save his friend. I will tell you that. His hair I... is so white and so pure. And elven features, they are easily mistakable for a woman at any point. The Bola, things he not, did... Not have a thing for dressed? Oh my Dritz god. This is a very capable adventurer. Writing stories I... about him is an honor. 
Now, I would only offer contention on, we all know pink is pink not is just color. color. It okay. would be purple. It would be elegant. Purple would bring out his eyes, but I assure you... Yeah, but a, like a, a soft lavender. A soft a very, lavender. A very delicate... Nice with the skin and the hair. A very Ooh. delicate lilac was what he was wearing. Okay. I'm okay, just, I can spike a picture there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tug uh, Begonia closer and just whisper. When you write up this contract, uh, make sure to include something along the lines of if this trip is not satisfactory, we ruin the establishment. What? <laughs> how, uh, how I don't, I don't think that's how, I don't think that's how that works at all. How, how many years into the contract should I bury that so he just doesn't read it? Um. You know, you know, you know, you know. Contracts have to be like signed by a notary and officiated by the guild within the city Look, of Waterdeep. We'll, so if we'll do it. it. Um, let me ask about this yes, book yes, again, we'll, real we'll quick, Volo. Would it happen to, by chance, give me an advantage? Wink on making friends. Wink. What is your question? I'm asking if the book gives advantage on, like, I don't know, persuasion rolls or something like his last book did in uh, uh, the other... Oh, uh, you don't have the book yet, but it, prob it probably would. Gotcha. You, okay. have, you, have to, you have to earn the book. He, he can't get it when he's dead. Oh, I mean, we can't can, we can, we can off of his body. No, if, you if, take, he, you, if he gives you a book and you don't show up, then he's down a book. <laughs> Books are expensive. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I get it. I, I pay 17 slave gnomes to print this book one at a time. Exactly. In a world of magic? They still have to use a printing press. They're not cheap. Magic doesn't solve uh, all the problems. I think a blank was supposed to be like 50 gold. The 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 other Volo book is like 50 gold. It, like books Books are not cheap and magic doesn't solve all problems. Yeah, there's, there's a reason. There's a reason people still die, <laughs> and magic causes a lot of problems that need to be and answered by non-magical means. It's so. Magic used to solve all problems, and then the spell plague happened, and it doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> I, it, it didn't solve problems before the spell plague. I can assure you. Uh, oh, it's no, guys, you want to do like, this? You wanna, I don't have if, if you have an somewhere. evil yes, city, yes, meteor yes, swarm the solves the problem. So I. Uh, we will have this uh, this uh, napkin contract. It says, uh, "You will be my guests for the party. Uh, you will uh, you will help me and uh, watch over me and make sure I do not make a fool of myself. Uh, you will receive this book, and you will receive a one a week at uh, the Trollskull Manor uh, to pamper yourselves and enjoy your time uh, as a guest of Volo the Garm uh, for all." of the time that constitutes a week. Yes? Okay. We are in agreement. Everybody signed the napkin, okay? What time is this book signing? Evening, a, afternoon. Evening. He gives you a time. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> ask as soon as I stuff my mouth with the food. <laughs> I, I, I waited. I was watching you like, hang on, wait. Mm -hmm. He hasn't asked me anything while I've been eating popcorn. Let's see if I can bamboozle. Son <laughs> of a bitch. Y'all are yeah, jerks. <laughs> I'm just like, well, that's okay. We have plenty of time to get a to get some gold to get some nice outfits. We can look nice there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is yeah, uh, well, fine I, I'm in. Uh, girls were going shopping, I guess. This reaches her arm into a bag that should not hold her arm. Pulls out a quill. I'm good to sign. Well, I don't have a quill. Can I borrow yours? Yeah, that's why I kind of read it out. Mm -hmm. well, hey. after, after twist signs, I sign. Can I actually look around to who might be listening? Certainly. Nope. Nope. <laughs> you look around and you don't see many many people. Uh, what you do notice though is uh, Meilun has definitely finished off the pig and he comes around and he says, well I guess this is my cue to go ahead and say, uh, Volo, good to see you, and he shoots some finger crossbows and Volo finger crossbows back. He says, uh, 
Uh, I got some more ass to eat, so he uh, grabs Rose and throws her over his shoulder. I allow it. He says, uh, y'all have a good night. I'll try and bring her back in one piece. Bye, Rose. Don't forget to pee after. Wow, that's, um... Okay. He carries her off. Uh, well, now I've got to make a lot of money. Uh, I Best only have not. 20 gold pieces, and the dress I want is like 25. I take like a six of the fabric it takes to get you guys dressed, so I think I'm mm -hmm. okay getting dressed. But I should be able to loan you like five gold. Can we do that? It's so nice. Yeah. I am going to earn 10 gold so I can get my giraffe. I would like to not have this conversation at the table with Olaf. <laughs> I don't think he gets to join in in girl talk. This wouldn't be the first time he's heard about people in dresses, okay? so No, it's not about that. It's that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to hang out with Olaf anymore. Oh, that's <laughs> it's, rude. It's, wow. <laughs> Clint is just like looking at him like, wow, it's like she's like wrapping up the meat and stuff to just eat it real quick. I can't believe you, you know, just be so just, rude to him. Just, just takes cool the whole charcuterie it was board. Cool to meet him. It was cool to meet him, but now he's my boss and I want to just not be here anymore. just want to not be here. <laughs> Funny how that shit Oh, sorry. She's got a thing with like, you're, you're great until like you're a higher position than her, and then it's the intimidation fact. You you understand. Uh, it's not quite all, all right. right. It's, uh, uh, it's not every day that a woman is intimidated by the presence of all of them. It's okay. Oh, I assure you, honey, I'm not intimidated. I just don't like. Of course not. I, I don't I, like. Uh, what, what's the word? Fraternizing with my. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. I can I can pay your larger friend to step on me if I really. Oh, she's good at also, that. also nowhere on this. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's like tapping it. Nowhere on the the contract <laughs> the was an H, was was an HR set up. So there is yeah. no fraternization rules. You're fine. It's it's a, it's a personal policy, okay? Yeah, it's a fine. Okay. Movie. So flips the napkin over. Getting stepped on costs thirty gold per step. <laughs> No, you get both steps for 30 gold. And it's if they're wearing stilettos. That's true. So, what are the rest of you doing for the evening? Looking to earn some more gold because the fancy clothes are expensive. Mm -hmm. Fancy clothes yeah, I was are gonna, expensive. I was going to kind of just hang out with the gang. Um, I don't really have anything functionally I want to do. Um... I guess when it's time to call it a night, I give my... I, this may be something we worked out in the past, but I either give the pendant to Colindria or Rose, and then I, I literally sleep inside of the pendant because it's a like it's a chamber filled with pillows. That's literally what it says <laughs> in the vassal description. Love and it. that's where me and Iffy, you know, you, are roommates. You, you enter and... Uh... And and your wife is just cooking. About time you got home, right? Turns into a, a lesbian sitcom. <laughs> but yeah, I don't give it to Twist. Not because I have anything against Twist, but it's like big. I guess it would just look it would look unbecoming around your neck. Well, I also have a bag of holding too. Oh, do you? Oh, that's I a fantastic have. idea. <laughs> oh yeah, wait. <laughs> Is that anyone considered a other pocket dimension? I was going to if I'm I fairly would, certain uh, it is. There's, no, no, no. A, there's a certain type of uh sorcerer that has or I think it's a wizard actually that has the wrist dimension. They have a they can put anything in the dimension in their wrist for however uh, conjurers. Yeah. Spells wrist rocket or wrist rocket? Something. I, I'm not sure. But it's, yeah, they can use the, they, it's one of their, uh, like, subclass abilities. And they can just like, oh, I'm going to steal this. Whip. 
goes right into the dimension in my wrist. Anywho. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll go help Calendria make money. Alrighty. Um, well, hey, uh, why don't you guys make a roll to earn some money then? How are you making are money? You, you? How are you making that money? Um. Well, as a gladiator and entertainer, performance. I will perform for people for money, feats of strength, and all kinds of, on and and running my mouth and making exaggerated things and all that. Um, I'll say that for some reason, uh, uh, Begonia is a fire twirler, but she doesn't have uh, proficiency in performance, so this is going to be fun. She's she's a uh, up-and-coming fire twirler, let's say. He is going to set herself on fire on the first roll. <laughs> and twist be the crowd, kind of like, ooh, look at that person, Like that's so cool. Just watching as she's on fire, turning into a charred corpse. Well, hey, um, that's definitely enough. Um, so, are you doing your not popular demand, but your your gladiator ability to earn gold? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, they, 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 all they put was by popular demand on this. Oh, it is by popular demand. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. In addition, as long as you perform each night. So yeah, we don't have to pay for food and board tonight while I perform for crowds. I was like, that's fine. I was just trying to see if they ever... They never give for earning money. Um, oh, I know. It sucks. Or it's like, oh, maybe someone will help you out. I'm like, define help out. That is such a vague term. Like, do they give me a high five? Like, good job, buddy. That's helpful. Emotionally. Let's see. Earning. Doesn't help me, you know, buy a fancy dress. Any money from skills or some ways to earn gold and stuff. DM, ha. Huh? My ways to get rich quick between adventures. I don't need money making schemes. I need, like, actual, like, how much can you make if you do this? Like, why is, why do we not? Perfect. Calundria and Begonia start a pyramid scheme yeah. in the middle of water. Dude. Sounds like the name of a Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode. Yeah, I love it. The gang make a pyramid scheme. Uh, Rose come back. All right, guys. Well, Maun loaned me some gold for the dress, and why are authorities from Luskin here? What is going on? So I like it. This one for for making money really quick gives all these suggestions on how to make money. With no money listed. Stefan, a tired sex worker leaves the party. The key to their room as they leave after a bad business night. Hey, free room and board. Let's go. Um, yeah. Okay. No, hold on. I like this idea. I can work with this. Um, good redemption. Um, as you guys are finishing your performance here uh, for the night, um, a little little halfling woman uh, comes sauntering by. Um, she's got one of those like long stem cigarettes, and she just exhales and she says, "What a fucking night." Being on my knees all day is killer on my back. I'm retiring. Here you go, sweetheart. You look like you could work them better than I ever could. And she hands Calindria a key. She says, third door on the left, top floor. Well, Begoni, you have fun tonight. Uh, 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 okay, um, I'm going to use, uh, my vessel ability and swoop myself into my pendant after I hand it to Calindria. <laughs> I'll have your back if you need me. I got your back, friend. I, I, I don't know if you want to be on the dresser, but you know. Oh shit! I can hear everything that happens. You want to? You want to? You want? You want to go spend Why tonight with you Twist? Why are so horny? I just want to not have to hear sex one night. Hey, I was offered this job. I didn't. Ask for it, I unlike didn't, somebody I didn't currently choose the in, life. in the luau. The life chose me. Unlike our one-eyed luau friend up in the other room, okay? Well, they had that. Oh, it's not getting so paid for it. So. Those two have a lot of chemistry. I, I hope things go well for them. Mm -hmm. but, um, I got a good feeling about those well, two. 
Well, you you could go hang out with Twist. Maybe she can make some money or something or do stuff. And... I'll, I'll just go get a room back at the portal. It's fine. Have a good night. Be safe. Oh, this is still at the portal. We'll, it's fine. We'll definitely. Oh, we're still in the portal. Gotcha. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep y'all keep y'all centralized for ease. Don't worry. Oh. I'm sure I'll be fine. Okay. It's whoever's I mean, up in that room. I'm probably gonna be worry fine. about. You're absolutely tough as hell, and just you go, you kill it. You got this. I, I don't know. Uh, at this point, Begonia's like, I don't know how to end the conversation. So I don't know what to do with now. this. Innuendo yep. turns around and leaves. In her endo. Twist flies up to the going and actually holds up her bag holding. Hold this for a second, please. Wait, what? Hold, please. Okay. And I take it. I didn't hear what you say what it was, but I take whatever oh, you said. Twist's bag holding and she, she just crawls and just leaves her head popped out the, out the hole of it. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you two you're have fun. Horrible. Okay. Don't, I'm don't get into go trouble. Get Though to be fair, if you do get in trouble, you know which room I'm in, and you'll probably know which room they're in. I'm not. I'm not saying that Twitch just gave you a good way to earn money too, but you know, here it's neither here nor there. <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh no. <laughs> um. No, it's still not clicking. Um, I'm just going to go ask Dar Doran for a room. You you have a portable hole now. If that may have that helps it out. Oh oh oh! I did. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, not me. Bag. Yeah, <laughs> e exactly. It sure is. You guys, you just because uh, I'm the innocent one. Uh, good times. Okay. Uh, um. Kalindria, you you head up, um, and uh, I'm not gonna go into detail. There, there's definitely a patron waiting uh, there, and you now have a key to a room that can be yours for the time being. Uh, give me a d, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me three d ten. Okay, you earn. How much were dresses did we establish? I know fine clothes are fifteen. I think said like oh. dresses were twenty or twenty-five. Well, fine clothes can accommodate dresses too. It's fine. We don't have to try and assume <laughs> it's more. Uh, yeah, you earned sixteen gold for the night. You did a good job. What's on the Zarya accent for clients? <laughs> yeah. You are uh, welcome for a destroyed pelvis. Enjoy day. Yeah, they basically just ask you to smash watermelons for an hour. Um, anyways, um, let's wrap up here because we're kind of winding down and we have uh, taken the time to establish what everybody's doing for the close out of their night. And there's only just a couple minutes left, so it's not a huge uh, deal to kind of get there. Hey, it's Safeguard. Hello. Um, yeah, that's some good work. They did some... Um, Smash watermelons forever. Get 16 gold for smashing watermelons. Um, hello, hello. Uh, just in time for us to wrap up, uh, we will come back next week. Nope, that's a lie. We will not be back next week. Um, Shay and I have uh, Ninja Sex Party on the docket for next Thursday. Um, but uh, if you come back and catch us on the 13th, uh, that will be the last session that we play on this channel before we go off on vacation. So um, it's good to see everybody. It's good to have had such a huge turnout for much of the night um, without putting any uh, social notifications out, except for Mimi rounding up all their friends, which I do appreciate because they were chatty in the chat and that was awesome. Um, Y'all are great. We love you. Um, I have a good feeling about this party. Y'all are fantastic too. Um, we did a bar. Yeah, and we get to go shopping for the opening scene. Next Hell yeah, session. <laughs> it's so good. We got a murder mystery going. Um, it's gonna be great. So um, catch us in two weeks when we come back before our vacation. So uh, there will be more uh, water deep epic heist uh, very soon. Um, so stick around for that. Come on, roll 20. Work with me here. 
kind of bring us back over because although the overlay uh, says it's Waterdeep Dragon Heist, it's actually Waterdeep Epic Heist. <laughs> yeah, so y'all have a great night. Everybody wave, except for Doogler, who's not on camera. But say goodnight all the same. Good night. Good night. <laughs>